Islamist infiltration. This may not happen, however, as the Syrian military has agreed to an open-ended ceasefire with Al-Qaeda in Zabadani, and Hezbollah probably won't carry out their own offensive against the town during a ceasefire, despite its strategic importance. The transition may reflect domestic pressure on Hezbollah, as many Lebanese factions have accused them of provoking cross-border attacks by Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State by participating in the war in Syria, and have called on Hezbollah to stop intervening abroad. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a former executive of a peanut company responsible for a deadly salmonella outbreak several years ago was sentenced Monday to serve nearly 30 years in federal prison, the harshest punishment ever handed down in a foodborne illness case. Stuart Parnell, the former owner of Peanut Corporation of America, PCA, was convicted last year of knowingly shipping tainted peanut butter and faking the results of lab tests intended to detect salmonella. Two others were prosecuted along with Parnell in the first ever criminal trial of food producers linked to a deadly outbreak. Parnell's brother, Michael, was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. Former quality control manager Mary Wilkerson received a five-year sentence. Before the 28-year sentence was read on Monday, relatives of the nine people who died during the outbreak in 2008 and 2000 nine spoke in court to express their losses. Randy Napier, whose 80-year-old mother died after eating peanut butter that originated in a PCA plant in Georgia, said it should be enough to send a message to the other manufacturers that this is not going to be tolerated anymore and they had better inspect their food. Parnell's defense attorney slammed Monday's punishment, saying it amounts to a life sentence for his 61-year-old client. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports Republican Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin abruptly pulled out of the 2016 presidential race on Monday, doomed by a lightning-quick collapse from serious contender to a candidate struggling to raise money and his profile. Walker, reading a statement in the Wisconsin capital of Madison, decried the negative tone of the Republican campaign in remarks seemingly directed at New York billionaire Donald Trump. He called on some of his rivals for the Republican nomination to join him in exiting the race to give voters a chance to rally around a frontrunner that can win the November 2016 presidential election. Walker's fall was dramatic and swift. He electrified conservatives in Iowa in January by promoting his record in Wisconsin of having beaten back public unions and survived a recall election. When he officially announced his campaign in early July, he was among the leaders for the Republican nomination. But the 47-year-old governor quickly struggled on the campaign trail despite a strong conservative record and a warm personal story as a Harley motorcycle aficionado. In an initial sign of trouble, Walker last week canceled events in California and Michigan to concentrate on Iowa, the key early voting state that shares a border with Wisconsin. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. For over 12 years, Halverson Enterprises CEO Peter Weathers has taken a hands-on approach in all aspects of the tech firm's growth and day-to-day -day business. But employees say the executive's true talent lies in his unique ability to recognize great ideas and then absolutely ruin them. For as long as I've worked here, Peter has been able to sit down in a meeting, listen to a million different ideas, pick out the one that makes the most sense creatively and financially, and then totally destroy it until there's basically nothing worthwhile about it left. He's remarkable. Employees through Throughout the company say they're most impressed by Weathers' ability to water down promising ideas with meaningless jargon, consistently choose the wrong person to head up every project, and inject virtually every halfway decent thought with his own short-sighted and terrible insights. At our all-hands meeting the other week, our team put forth a very feasible plan to boost productivity, and it was really incredible to see Peter's mind at work, just taking every good aspect of our proposal and dismantling it like a small child. This is the Onion News Network. Talk 
This is Free Talk Live. You're welcome to join us here on the radio waves. We'll give you the toll-free number and our Skype here in a moment with you in the studio tonight. You've got me, Ian. And Conan. And Mark. And uh, let's see. Uh, you can also join us on our website at freetalklive.com where you can actually create the content there that you see on the front page of the site. So please enjoy that. Uh, freetalklive.com. Now, it wasn't too long ago that we talked about a study. I think it was in the UK. They've done another one in the United States and the UK study showed that there were maybe a, a small minority of people in the UK who were willing to have sex with a robot. And I think it was like 15% or something like that. Nothing huge, but it's a starting point. And I imagine that will uh, we'll get it larger. That number will get larger as the sex robots become more realistic over time. I imagine you could already have a sex robot with the technology that we have today. Uh, but it will probably be a, a little on the clunky side, mm -hmm. let's say. Yeah, if you're if you're considering like Bender from Futurama or something off of Doctor Who or Battlestar yeah. Galacticus, like, hey, no, that those no, that's not going to work. But well, they're they're really coming up in the in the uh, they're coming up. Now, I, I up never there. saw the original Battlestar Galactica. Did you, Conan? Did you saw the seen the original series? I tried to watch one of them, I think, and it's it's pretty rough. Because the new one, uh, they've They're got the, the human robot Ooh. things, and I don't think anyone would have a problem having uh -huh. sex with uh, <laughs> the, that's the human. That's the future right there. Yeah, so the right now. Right, after, right, you know, right before they take, take over us. We're not there yet, um, but there are already debates being had about the ethics, supposedly, of having sex robots. There is actually uh, some sort of mo uh, there's some sort of movement. The website is campaign against, excuse me, campaign against sexrobots.wordpress.com and it's not immediately obvious that this is some sort of ultra, you know, right-wing religious movement or anything like that. It actually seems to not be that. Uh which is kind of a surprise. I figured okay. if there was going to be a campaign against sex robots, it would be, you know, yeah, from the, the the right. The typical people who don't like yeah. sex or at least pretend to not like it. The usual suspects. Uh but uh, what I've got here is I've got a story from the conversation.com called In Defense of Sex Machines. Why trying to ban sex robots is wrong, and they link over to this campaign against sex robots site, which has just a very simple statement on the front of their website uh, that I'm going to share with you here. Oh wait, no, this is not that simple. Okay, so there's the ethics of robotics on their page, and then also an about uh, page. So we'll start with the about. Over the last decades, an increasing effort from both academia and industry has gone into the development of sex robots. That is, machines in the form of women or children for use as sex objects. What about men? There's no men in this? This is the weird thing about this. We'll, we'll get into that. Substitutes for human partners or prostitutes. The campaign against sex robots highlights that these kind of robots are harmful and contribute to inequalities in society. We believe that an organized <laughs> what? approach... What? <laughs> what inequalities could possibly be made from this? We believe that an organized approach against the development of sex robots is necessary in response to the numerous articles and campaigns that now promote their development without critically examining their detrimental effect on society. As humanoid robots become more widespread, it's necessary to develop an engaged ethical response to the development of these new technologies. The ideas behind the campaign were launched in a paper presented at Ethicomp 2015 and are the following. So this is this is legit, right? Like, this is not a parody. There was some other, I forget what it was, but it was like, um, what was it, in the Austin, one of the Austin festivals where there was this parody group out that was trying to stop robots from being developed. And I was, remember that, yeah. It wasn't legit. They was were it South just, by Southwest? Yeah, it was South by Southwest, and uh, or some, one of those big Austin tech festivals. And they made some headlines, and it was... Seemed like it might have been real, but really all they were doing was promoting some movie or whatever it was. Yeah. So they weren't for real. This one looks legit. I mean, they actually presented a paper at Ethicomp 2015, and they say the following. We believe, point number one, we believe the development of sex robots further objectifies women and children. And I think that this does beg the question, why wouldn't there be male sex robots? It seems pretty obvious there would be male sex robots. Number one, uh, guys who are gay are going to want male sex robots. There are currently, um, you know, male sex 
toys out there. Plenty of them. Lots of them. Uh, With robotic parts. And those, you know, so the those idea Those are sold that, to a lot of women, it, those it, sex toys. Indeed they are. Yeah. Uh, so I can't imagine that they wouldn't, uh, you know, there the, the, wouldn't be a niche for this. It seems absolutely ludicrous. This sounds like uh, the social justice warrior saying men are bad is what this sounds like. Yeah. And they may, make sure to toss in children to make, them sound, make all I, men sound dangerous. Right. I think we need to start a new movement, uh, All Robots Matter. <laughs> Not just the the kids and the in the women's men yeah. men can be object, objectified, right? Or, Absolutely. or or we can, I guess, according to this uh, article. Well, I mean, clearly uh, uh, statement actually. Yeah, I mean, women can clearly objectify men and vice versa, whatever that means. The vision they say for sex robots is underscored by reference to prostitute John Exchange, which relies on recognizing only the needs and wants of the buyers of sex. The sellers of sex are not attributed subject, uh, subjectivity and reduced to a thing, just like the robot. Um, as far as the sellers of sex are concerned, um, you're providing a service. The needs of the sellers of sex are money. So they're getting their just needs like met. the need of every other employee in, uh, on the planet. I mean, people aren't going to pick up uh, garbage or you know do your plumbing or serve you food because they think you're swell. I wonder what the uh, sex trade workers think about the sex robots. I imagine they might be a little threatened by them as well. Well, I imagine um, probably not. What they're saying to themselves is that they have a limited time in their career. Mm -hmm. Most of them are probably not saying, I want to do this for the rest of my life. So yeah. um, they're thinking that they can outpace the uh, the robots, and it stinks to be uh, you know the, the next prostitutes down the line. But, you know, I would guess that there's a good percentage of people who are doing prostitution who would like to make the kind of money they make doing something else. But wouldn't it be funny if years from now you have uh, a group of prostitutes picketing a, a robot uh, a creator? Sex worker versus sex worker. The, yeah, exactly. Sex bot. You're taking away our jobs. The development, they say, of sex robots and the ideas to support their production show the immense horrors still present in the world of prostitution, which is built on the perceived inferiority of women and children and therefore justifies their uses as sex objects. This is uh, you know, news to me. I had no idea that prostitution was built on the perceived inferiority of women. It seems like the prostitutes are the ones who control the uh, the deal, right? Like they decide whether or not they're offering their services to people, and they can say no to anybody who comes along and looks suspicious or whatever. I mean, they're totally in control. Well, I think it depends on the situation. Well, uh, unless they're owned by some pimp slave or whatever. Okay, I was talking about voluntary, consensual prostitution, which of course is the classic form of it. The problem, and well, I don't know if that's a classic form. The problem with prostitution is is that it has had a long and sore career um, well, only because it's illegal I, I don't know that that's entirely true uh, it, de it depends there's pl certainly plenty of places and uh, throughout human history where prostitution wasn't illegal but we female slaves were still sold with the express notion that they could be used for sex so that's not you know like I don't is that know. happening in Nevada is there a lot of sex, nope. sex slavery there okay it's legal in Nevada no, I mean, they're protected in Nevada. They got, yeah. They're protected by laws. That's, That's right. actually where I thought well, this— no, they're protected by bouncers. There are bouncers in the uh, you know, the prostitution houses there, the brothels, who will absolutely throw your butt out uh, if there's a problem. Uh, this is actually where I thought this was going, the statement from this group uh, that we were creating robot slaves, and that was a problem. You know, we're, no. going, we're going back to a form of slavery, and that it would be an issue. The other— uh, issue I thought these guys might have is the whole uh, Stephen Hawking uh, robots or artificial intelligence is on its way to take over uh, take over uh, the, the human race and no, this, this is, is just, just about... and this is just one more step in that direction. No, they but don't. They come at it but they haven't any... said any of that. Yeah, they don't. I don't think they come at it from any of those points. This is all just oh, these sex robots are going to make they're going to set women back, is the idea. And I think it's ridiculous. You can share your thoughts with us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Whether or not you'd be interested in sex with a robot, I mean, you can talk about that if you want. But how do you feel about where these guys are coming from, or these gals? I don't know who's in charge of this movement. Campaign against sex robots. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype as well. Skype username's lrn.fm. That number, 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. 
The vet had them on antibiotics as well as steroids. Nothing worked. The vet had given him a cortisone. The vet prescribed an antihistamine. The vet thought that Molly was just old. Probably three to four hundred dollars every four months. At least five thousand dollars in vet bills. All total, twenty-seven hundred dollars in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Eight five nine four two eight one thousand. The omega three fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive of enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. The ingredients are what the veterinarian said he was lacking. Within two days, his scratching, it seemed to go away. After five weeks, her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. Molly's gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Oh, yes. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. No! That's the sound your brain makes when you realize you're buying something and forgot the coupon. Online or in a store, knowing that you're missing a deal is the worst. You need the app from Retail Me Not right now. Get thousands of coupons from 50,000 stores like Kohl's, Domino's, Best Buy, and more with crazy deals like 60% off, free shipping, and free gifts with purchase. You can get a text invite to download the Retail Me Not app 100% free right now for Apple or Android. Just text the code UPDATE to 42767. Then just show your phone at checkout to save. It literally couldn't be easier. It's 2015. Keep your coupon bonds in your phone. Stop what you're doing and text UPDATE to 42767. Listeners will get a text with a link to download it 100% free. Never forget another coupon again. Text the code UPDATE to 42767 right now. That's UPDATE to 42767. Message and data rates may apply. For terms and privacy, visit RetailMeNot.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like, then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. We are Free Talk Live, and you can become a part of the show just by calling in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Why is it wrong to have sex robots? And what you're going to hear, not just tonight on the show, but just as things move ahead into the future of the inevitable sex robots coming along, 
uh, is, I think, various different objections. The objections we're hearing tonight, I wasn't expecting, but uh, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. These seem to be coming kind of from the left, but I expect you're also going to hear uh, people from the right arguing against sex robots as well. Just I'd like to say sex. good Good luck. Um, good luck to stop them, you mean? Yeah, eliminating uh, sex robots. Any more than you can eliminate uh, the other uh, marital aids that exist. They've tried in Alabama. I believe they are banned there, if I'm not mistaken. You uh, think that they're non-existent? Sex toys. Do you think are... it's even difficult to get them? Do you think they run any, any stings? Do you think that police officers want to be want to bother being the, the dildo patrol? You might be surprised. I want to see this movie now. I want to see the rise of the sex robots and the government strikes back and sends out the uh, the Harrison Ford uh, robot killers, who the sex robot killers. And now he goes around, and that's all he does, <laughs> until he falls in love with one, except he thinks he's she's human, and then he has a whole change of heart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they I, did that, you didn't see they? That? Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Blade uh, Runner. Well, yeah. Andro our, our Android's uh, dream of robot sheep or something like that. Bitcoininvestor.com. You can go to the D Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, which probably isn't too far away from a uh, legal brothel, and join Trace Mayer, Stephanie Murphy, Joseph Von Perling, Paul Pui, Tone Vase, Bitcoin Bell. You might know her as Michelle Seven, our former co-host. She's going to be there and many more. Uh, lots of Bitcoin enthusiasts will be there October 29th and 30th at the upcoming first ever Bitcoin Investor Conference. The D Hotel accepts Bitcoin, so you can buy your room for Bitcoin there. And you'll get to meet some of the movers and the shakers and the big names in uh, Bitcoin. Go to BitcoinInvestor.com. You can get your early bird tickets. That's BitcoinInvestor.com. It's the first year of this event, which means great idea to go and attend this thing. Uh, that way you can be, you know, if you come back for the second year, you already know everybody. Or at least a lot of the people who will be there. So go to BitcoinInvestor.com. And Mark, you are going to be broadcasting Free Talk Live from the event. First ever from Las Vegas? That's true. BitcoinInvestor.com. So well, the, what I find from this article about uh, the sex robots The campaign here, against sex the, robots. The campaign against sex robots. And they go, they're, they're pretty clear here. They basically are concerned with sex robots being female. And then they toss and in children. children in order to further vilify... Males, one would assume, right? Like, I don't, I'm just guessing that uh, there are female pedophiles. There are female, fe yeah. female pedophiles. I'm certainly not saying otherwise, but I would uh, say that the likelihood is that, uh, uh, you know, lesbians don't buy a lot of sex toys that are sort of uh, female oriented. Does that make any sense? They're not using, they're not buying the same sex toys guys are. Okay. And it just doesn't make any sense for them to do that. So this is a guy-oriented attack, and it's it's really just a long line of attacks that say um, female sexuality is beautiful. It needs to be flourished and fostered. Male sexuality is dirty and yucky, and mm. it's rape, 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 rape. Right? That's all this is. Is this is just a bunch of people yelling, "Men are rapists." And they found a new way to yell men are rapists. Is there That's any all. way to determine who this group is, Ian? Is there, do they have any links to any other groups? Uh, well, yes, they do. As a matter of fact, their website, campaignagainstsexrobots.wordpress.com, also has a link, a links page to what they consider to be important organizations, which include the Campaign Against Killer Robots, which I don't think that's a bad idea. I would like to not have military robots killing people. I think that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. They also have the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women. I'm actually against trafficking all human beings. Let's let's include all humans in uh, the anti-trafficking group. Uh, the Dreamcatcher Foundation. I don't know what that is. Prostitution Research and Education Campaign to End Loneliness. So no groups I've ever heard of here, but they're they're on their website, Conan. Let's go to Ron in Virginia. We'll continue their list of why they are doing what they're doing, which is advocating against the idea of sex robots, presumably to ban them. But, Ron, go ahead with your thoughts. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Conan and Mark. Well, I'm thinking like this. Like, I I'm all for this idea. I've been saying for the longest time the first human-only-looking robots would be for sex. Why have a robot look like a human? And that's for sex. But um, in the beginning, and we're getting pretty close to this, actually. Uh, you can look at the Amazon and, 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 and artificial flesh. And we're not very far from the stage. Hey, Ron, I'm sorry to bug you, man. I always have to do this because our phone system seems to be kind of screwed. Can you back off your phone by like an inch and a half or two uh, inches? Sure. Okay. Am I good now? I don't know. Keep going. Okay. 
So in the beginning, the machines would be, you know, they would just basically be uh, very expensive and fancy, um, you know, blow up doll, basically. It's so bad I can't but even understand I don't even you. know what you're saying. Man. I'm sorry, Ron. Sorry. I'm going to put you on hold. We'll see if we can get you on a better line or something like that. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. I really wish I could know what Ron was saying. It sounded kind of interesting. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-3733. Well, he was, he was talking about the buildup of, you know, what we get first. So we start with, like, auto- automated coffee makers, and then we've got the, 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 the machines in our cars that are, you know, making all the decisions for us when we need to change the oil and stuff. And then eventually, you know, you know what's next? I mean... I don't know. I wish they could find a better way to make coffee. It seems like they've kind of come to the pinnacle of what you can do with a coffee maker. Well, we'll still have that coffee maker, but we'll have our sex robot making it for us in the morning. Well, the, a robot that makes coffee would be really awesome. Right. But so it'll, it'll, that, that's two or three robots. There's you know. nothing's going to stop me from having to put in 12 scoops of ground coffee and pouring in 10 cups of water. And then, I mean, I can set it ahead of time so it's ready in the morning, but, you know... I can wait the 10 minutes if I push the button anyway, so I I don't know. All right, so more here from the list of the campaign against sex robots uh, at WordPress.com. Now, this next one, number four here on their list of why they're doing what they're doing, uh, I actually agree with. We propose that the development of sex robots will further reduce human empathy that can only be developed by an experience of mutual relationship. Now, I get where they're coming from on that one, right? Like, if all you do is spend your time with robots and, you know, you're... you're yeah, yeah, 90% of your time on with robots and then the other 10% on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. You're going to lose touch with the humanity around you. And I think that there's some legitimate concern uh, with that one. I think that ultimately... I don't have any concern. What do you mean? I really don't have any concern with that happening to you people. You think it's fine if people don't connect Who with cares? other humans? Uh, here's why you should care, because people are social animals, and they go crazy if they don't have interactions with other human I'm beings. I'm sure the robots will be programmed to handle that. You think so? Yeah, why not? Right before they take over. Cause, <laughs> well. Yeah, but I, and Mark's absolutely right. I mean, it. I mean, wow. Uh, Let's yeah. keep the antisocial humans busy with the robots, shall we? Let's just keep them busy. Let's occupy them. It's like babies with a mobile. Um, you know, that's it's good. It's good that they're busy with the robots. Who cares? Not a mm. concern of mine. Well, isn't there a possibility they could go crazy and, like, start killing people? That's when we send out the killer robots for them after they have gone crazy. Well, I got to say, I think there's a concern there. I'm sorry. I don't, you know, you don't have to share it. That's certainly the case. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I mean, we already see it. With people spending so much time on their digital devices, there's, a, I think, a concern that they're getting separated from reality to some extent by that. Yeah. You, know, you don't get to appreciate the world around you if you're staring at a screen the whole time. People said the same thing about books. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Turn on the news and you'll hear stories of natural disasters, political unrest, and financial crisis. In times of uncertainty, how will you take care of your family's most basic needs? Food Insurance, America's most trusted provider of freeze-dried emergency food, has solutions that fit your family's needs and budget. Our meals are delicious, nutritious, and come with a guaranteed 25-year shelf life. For a limited time, we are sending a free freeze-dried meal to all listeners of this program. Go to foodinsurance.com and request your free meal today. That's foodinsurance.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, the road to freedom. A 
film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is down $10 at $1,123 per ounce. Silver is 38 cents lower at $14.85 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $230 U.S. dollars. Roberts & Roberts is your trusted source for physical precious metals for nearly 40 years. Give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the ideas of liberty daily. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, we invite you to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you've got Ian. And Conan. And Mark. And uh, sex robots are on the table for discussion. If you'd like to jump into uh, here and join us, you're welcome to do that. We've also got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And it sounds a hell of a lot better than the phone calls we've been getting. Yeah, I tried to do a Skype only night just as a test, and you know we we didn't get any more Skype calls than we normally do. So I felt like I should continue to allow calls. I'm gonna see if I can come up with some sort of solution. Uh, maybe we can reroute the phone lines into our studio because uh, every time that we've had these bad sounding calls, there's every, every now and then I'll ask one of those callers to call back on our lines, and they sound fine. So I don't know what the problem is, and I apologize to all of our listeners who've been suffering through this uh, with us as we try to figure out what the heck's going wrong. Uh, But if you want to try the toll-free lines out, it seems to be a crapshoot. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. And again, Skype, you'll sound awesome almost every time at Skype username lrn.fm. You know, if you're online, then privacy should matter to you. Maybe you've been paying attention to the Edward Snowden revelations, which from what I understand, the worst is yet to come, according to Edward uh, Edward Snowden. I thought I saw a headline about that the other day. I didn't uh, take that. It was a video, so I didn't take the time to, to actually watch the video, but that's what the, the headline claimed. And uh, so privacy matters. If you want to protect your privacy, you have to take the steps to do so. Luckily... They're pretty easy. Like ProXPN. You go to ProXPN.com, use code FTL50, and you'll get 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of the account when you buy their annual account with the code FTL50. And that gets you a virtual private network. That's what ProXPN is. They encrypt your online communications. Whatever it is it's heading to your internet service provider will be encrypted by ProXPN, so they won't know what you're doing anymore. Your ISP will be in the dark about what you're using their internet connection for. 
which means they can't log any information about you anymore. That means they can't sell that information to other corporations, can't hand it over to the government. Whether you have Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or Linux, you can get ProXPN. Just get started at ProXPN.com right now. It can be cheaper per month than a good cup of coffee when you use coupon code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and 50, as in 50% off. Take back the privacy that is your right at ProXPN.com. We go to Aaron. He is in Philadelphia on Skype. Hey, guys. I was um, listening to your conversation, and I was thinking about robots and the transition eventually to probably... So I believe eventually there will be a machine race, whether it's people transitioning into machines or we develop a system of artificial intelligence. And I was wondering what you guys think about if people make this transition, how long will it be before you could classify the robot people as a new species before they've changed so drastically in their outlook on the world that we can't identify with them anymore? I agree with this uh, completely. I don't think that it's going. I don't think the robots are going to take over uh, as a as another species. I mean, they are going to take over, but it's going to be us transitioning into robots. We're going to just start upgrading things. You know, we're gonna we're gonna install a memory upgrade here. They are our robotic eyes or or limbs or whatnot. And before you know it, it's just gonna it's just gonna take over. It's just gonna make too much sense uh, not to do this uh, in order to compete. Uh, and. In- in nature, there's a, a phenomenon called a hybrid. Um, the mule is a good example. It's a donkey and a horse got together. Um, there's something else out there that's uh, the opposite. And got the uh, liger. Yeah, well, liger's a good one. Mm. Um, there's uh, actually cats and rabbits have been reported to have bred what? and produced really? something. That, that, look, I don't know. Um, I haven't gone really deep into this. I read an article one time. Huh. Um, you know, I don't spend my. <laughs> that's that's my job is to be a jack of all trades. And right? usually, like and usually these hybrids, everything. These hybrids are almost always the end of the line. They cannot reproduce. That's it. Right. And, and this is with uh, produce a lot with the uh, agriculture. Now, I would say that um, in this case, you're talking about essentially hybrids coming into to being um, here. Uh, I, I would think it would have to be, to be a new species, it would have to be entirely um, not human. And otherwise, it's a hybrid, essentially, or a chimera or whatever term we wish to, to, to use to describe this. So, And uh, as far as reproduction goes, they can just build another one of themselves. Is th- if that counts as reproduction, I would say then you know it has to be completely uh, robotic to be a new species. Right. So then where, how would you classify like me and a copy of myself in a robot body? Am I the same species as myself in a robot body? So Completely. are you saying, you know, a human consciousness, um, since you can't quantify it, I would say until you can quantify human consciousness, I'd say that uh, at that point, you're essentially a robot. Right. OK, I guess that answers it. Anything else you want to share, Aaron? Um, only that one of our greatest strengths as a species is our diversity, whether it's different races or different abilities or genetic diversity in general. And that if we do make this transition, it seems like it's a negative one that we would transition towards bodies that are homogenous, where everybody would have the same parts. And then we would be susceptible to the same kinds of attacks or downfalls like an EMP blast from the sun. Well, I don't think you have to worry, um, because one thing's for sure, not everyone is going to sign on board with this. Now, Conan, I think, is right that the drive of competition will likely encourage adopting this new technology and taking on uh, you know, becoming transhumanists or whatever, you know, where you're augmenting yourself with technology, upgrading your body, ultimately maybe becoming a purely robotic being that has some sort of human consciousness uh, sort of at the end game. And, but, you, and you better believe that the non-upgraders will be scorned. They will be the bottom of the barrel and they won't get the job. Well, they won't feel that way. They'll feel like they are the pure humans and that they are better than the, ro- the robot augmented people. So you're going to have a, you're going to have groups of, you know, at least two groups, if not more, you know, the group of the people who are saying, oh, my God, it's, you know, it's terrible to uh, to become a robot. You're you're debasing yourself. You're destroying your your temple, is, which is God or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so you need to stop that. So there'll be people coming at it from a religious perspective. You'll have uh, the good news is that those people um, will really only be, uh, you know, uh, able to do anything physically to harm anybody from somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, 
you know, from, say, 18 to 38. So 20 years tops that they'll be sort of physically dangerous. Um, and only half of their population is likely to be useful in that area. So that's um, men. Uh, the fact is that the robot body people who are going to be 10 times as strong, maybe uh, 50 times as mm -hmm. strong, if they're given any trouble by the loud mouth, uh, you know, normal folks will just rip their throat out. Well, I mean that's a that seems like a kind of a mean thing to say, Mark. But uh, what? It's only I'm it's, only it's, talking it's, about defensive. It's, it's going that, to be a war. Yeah, that gets back uh, to for, my for survival. Thing. About that gets back to my original thing about diversifying into like a new species. The robot people, their minds won't continue to think for long. They'll evolve mentally far more quickly than we will as they can upgrade themselves. And so eventually, they're going to get to a point where they're going to say, "What do we need all these meatheads for?" Mm -hmm. And there's another question is, you know, and this is something I've always asked is what, uh, what, what is it? What's the drive of a, of a, uh, of an upgraded species? I mean, if you take out the chemical element, which is what we, why we do what we do. I mean, everything I do is because is, is the because of a, brain. yeah, it's a chemical response to, you know, my, my, uh, my environment. But if I don't require, if I don't rely on those chemical reactions or the chemical responses to make my decisions, what will my day be like? Why will I exist? Why will I do what I do? Where does drive come from at that Yeah, what point? do I, yeah, uh, you know, it's, or do I eventually try to evolve into energy and go be in the sun somewhere, you know, oh. or float, or, you know, go back into uh, primitive lizard brains? I've said it many times, is, is that if I didn't have a uh, sex drive, that I'd still be living at home with mom. Um, I mean, you know, things were going pretty good there. There's, uh, you know, you, uh, this lady that keeps the refrigerator full, and frankly, mm -hmm. um, you know, my grandmother used to take care of washing the clothes. Uh, things were really good there at the house, but no, no, I had to go out and adventure out on my own and, you know, earn a living and do all that stuff. If, if I wasn't driven in that way, um, and if a species wasn't driven in that way, what would happen? If they were had extraordinarily extraordinary longevity and didn't have to worry about reproduction in the same way, it's all Aaron, very interesting. Thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate the thoughts. Our toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. I understand, Mark, that you're giving the the credit to the robot side of things, but. How do you know that the other side isn't going to come up with some kind of weapon that's super effective against robots, like mm -hmm. the EMP, completely shutting down your body entirely? And then what do you got? 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number here. You can join us on Free Talk Live. Skype username's got... LRN.FM. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Now is the time to save on hardwood and more at Lumber Liquidator's end of summer clearance sale. We're making room for new fall inventory. That means it's your chance to get an incredible deal on solid pre-finished hardwood for just 99 cents. Three quarter inch solid pre-finished maple for $1.99 plus $1 off Bellawood Brazilian Cherry and Koa Hardwood. Get 10 to 15% off all Morning Star Bamboo. American and European laminate for 49 cents and 24 month special financing. Hurry, the end of summer clearance sale is going on now. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. My Patriot Supply is making the choice to get prepared easier and more affordable than ever. For a limited time, a four-week emergency food supply is just $99. That's 50% off the online price. Call 800-276-4010 to claim yours. Limit two per caller while supplies last. Get prepared today. Call 800-276-4010 today for your $99 four-week food emergency supply. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it 
And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in toll free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, which of the 50 states is the so-called strongest state? Uh, we will share that detail. And what's the least strong state? We've got that information for you. Mark has the story. That's on the way tonight. Uh, with you in the studio, you've got me, Ian. And Conan. And Mark. The story that we started the show out with was the Campaign Against Sex Robots. This does seem to be a real organization that, now, I'll give them credit. At least they don't say here that they are looking to ban the sex robots. So at least that's not what, what they're saying. What else are they possibly saying? That's not what they're saying yet. Uh, they do have goals and proposals here, but they are uh, ex expressing concern for the idea of the sex robot suggesting that a sex robot will somehow uh will will somehow make well that it'll make life more difficult for women and children apparently uh want to get back into that here i can't imagine what that means but um you know go ahead here's the ethics of robotics from their website campaign against sex robots.wordpress.com they say, we believe in the benefits of robots and technologies Wait to our second. society. If robots start doing, oh, I don't know, your dishes or making your food for you or whatever, it doesn't that, uh, isn't that directly detrimental to uh, dishwashers and cooks? Well, I guess they don't mind that people will be losing their jobs to robots. It's just that they I'm feel I'm sorry like to tell you there's a certain amount of women in this world whose job is to be a wife. And... You know what they're trading. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm I'm just thinking of uh, uh, I don't I can't remember her name, but this uh, the 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 Playboy model gal, and I think she I think she died. I can't even remember Anna exactly. Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah, Anna Nicole Smith. Um, and you know she essentially married an old guy to get wealthy. Uh, so they say we believe in the benefits of robots and technologies to our society and human cultures, but want to ensure that robotics develops ethically and that we do not reproduce inequalities with their development that could further reinforce disturbing human lived experiences. If this is an all woman group, then I think that's exactly what it is. They're afraid of losing their power. Uh, they're afraid of losing their hold on a bunch of dudes who, just like Mark said in the last segment, would never have left his mom's house if it wasn't for that sex drive. If they lose that power over us, we, you know, there's no reason for me to go out and get a job and pay for that washing machine or take care of some woman. 
you know, giving her, getting her stuff, getting her things, making her life happy. They, she's lost all power over me. Is that the only reason why I'm you... I'm not going in, this far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I you're guess. Out on your own, let's limb on your own, pal. Is that the only reason why you have a significant other, Conan, is because of the sex? I believe that there are a lot of people out there who uh, live a, 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 lar- a, a large portion of their life seeking out the sex. Okay. And sometimes... That's not you? That, no, it is not me. Okay. But I'm, but I'm speaking for the general population, who I, and, and I definitely believe it's a general population, that they... Are they after they're after the the relationship drama the or the 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 the, uh, the flourishing rate the 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 beginning of the relationship the two year period before mm-hmm. it goes to all to hell and looking for the sex and then they're and then they're up and leaving and they're going to find another one because that's what that's what's fun that's the that's the fun part you, uh, everything else is just drama and it's and it's painful. Well, I'll jump in on that. I've um I. I think my life would be entirely different. My motives would be entirely different if I didn't have a sex drive. So, the is it the only reason I'm in a would have a significant other? Yeah, it would be the only reason that I would have a significant other. See, I guess I don't have the same sex drive as uh, as you because uh, you know, for me, I like having a partner and somebody who's in who with whom I can well, be intimate. I was and- born into a team, Ian. Mm-hmm. I've got a family, and they're great. Why would I go looking at looking for to create a new team? Essentially, because um, I mean, essentially, my family has been cut off from me to some extent by the by dint of the fact that I have chosen to live with someone else, right? <laughs> and create a, you know a new family. I, I, my you know, <laughs> I'd be still living at home with mom and grandma. But things be, were great. But because you because you want to uh, you know bring your seed. Are continue on your seed. You do need to leave your team and go and uh, mix it up with another team. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're, well, that's how families right, work. Right, right. Yeah, otherwise, your family, your team, is destined to fail. I so, didn't so, there's, so there's some more chemicals right there at work. I didn't particularly uh, want to have a child, um, but I got to say it's great now that I do. I think he's awesome. But I mean, you know, when I when I was looking, uh, I, I wasn't looking to do that. That wasn't a goal of mine. But you wanted to have sex, but not necessarily a child. Sure. I mean, you know, I mean, if you do the former enough, you're going to get the latter. Yeah, not if you use protection, <laughs> mm-hmm. right? I mean, you know, well, not all that protection is entirely or, or, successful. Or pull an E in and go ahead and uh, the, the ultimate protection. A vasectomy. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Handy. Uh, so anyway, back to the story here from the campaign against sex robots. They say we are not proposing to extend rights to robots. We do not see robots as conscious entities. We propose instead that robots are a product of human consciousness and creativity, and human power relationships are reflected in the production, design, and the proposed uses of these robots. As a result, we oppose any efforts to develop robots that will contribute to gender inequalities in society. So, what the so like I said, if the women lose their power over men, they will, you will have your inequality. So now they're weaker, a, a physically weaker. Uh, you know, they have a different mind. They they do things differently, but they've lost their true hold over us, which is that power that which makes women women. I'm trying to decide. I don't whether think people have power over me. Uh, you know, for me, like I can take it or leave it when it comes to sex. So you know, I don't understand the why or men mar- or love. You know, because women want sex too. In my experience, women are just as sexually driven as men. So why it is that? But no, uh, yeah, but that's not yeah. And we know that, and we've talked about it on the show before. But it's not. I don't think it's something that is uh, taken seriously. That women are just as vulgar. They're just as uh, slutty. They're just as all. They're just. They're they're dogs just like we are. Mm-hmm. But but society treats them differently they for do. some reason. Yeah, and well, that's not fair. I would say that if there is a um, ongoing cultural conversation or belief um, that it would be that men need sex more than women need sex, and so therefore girls they cer- men get certainly what you act can like get out it. of it. They certainly act like it. It seems that way, but I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's true or not. It doesn't matter. That's not what I was talking about as truth. Uh-huh. I'm talking about the cultural, cultural beliefs and conversations, and I think that, um, that that's what uh, you have there. I'm trying to, Conan, I'm trying to debunk your theory here. But I honestly can't because they're talking about we want equal outcomes. Uh, first off, when somebody says they want equal outcomes, run away from that crazy communist as fast as you can, uh, because at this point, you know, the, the they, they want to take they want to take some power or some attribute from you. 
in order to, to to dumb you down to make you equal with them. It, that must be what they're they're trying to do. And and maybe it's not from me. Maybe they want to add to me, but the the likelihood is not that. The, if women can women can have sex robots like men can have sex robots. There sure. you have your e- equality, ladies and gentlemen. This is equality. Now whatever these people are talking about is that we've got to watch out how sex robots might be used by men. Because they were very specific um, that yeah, uh, it's the people that ridiculous. would be harmed would be women and children. Well, these guys play into this illusion that you're talking about, the idea that women aren't as sexually driven. They're, they're playing into that by suggesting that, oh, women would never be interested in having a sex robot. Only men who want women to be robotic and children to be robotic so they can these men can play out all their horrible sexual fantasies on these robots. Us women, we're not interested in having sex, so we would never have a sex robot. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, the um, it's kind of like the TV preachers. Um, you know, whenever you hear somebody talking about porn and all and prostitution and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you can be pretty sure that their downfall is going to come. They're going to be found with a gay hooker in a hotel room someplace. Always, right? Seems like we're it. waiting for Santorum to come out of the closet. He's got <laughs> he's got another five years at least. I don't know, uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's, I've seen enough of these things happen that it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. Um, and this was what I'm hearing here is I'm hearing a bunch of women who are horrified by their own uh, their, their own, own sexuality. No, their their own rape fantasies. Because they're they're expecting all men to be rapists, so therefore um, that's what the expectation is, right? Like the, if a thief thinks everybody steals, a person who has rape fantasies thinks everybody's a rapist. Um, I'm that would be well, my concern. I wonder if they got that from all those porn books they read. Those, well, those well, porn fantasies. There's supposedly a theory. Um, supposedly this is stuff I've read. I've never been a woman. Um, rape fantasies are as common among women as the two two women on one guy fantasy is for guys. Well, and that's one of the pretty theories, common. Now, one of the theories for why rape fantasies are common among women is because society tells them. You're not supposed to be interested in sex, but they are interested in sex, and so they feel like there's this, you know, sort of mental conversation going on behind the scenes that says, "Well, I really want to have sex, but I'm not supposed to have sex. So if someone has sex with me against my consent, then I can have the sex that I I'm wanting, but I didn't consent to it, so I I didn't really want it." I think something. it's more it's of crazy. a I think it's more of a hold on to the Puritan. Uh, subservience. I think that's especially in our country, and I, I don't know. I guess we need some need need someone from another country to call in and say how do the women approach sex in their countries. Well, luckily you can do that if you're outside of the United States easily by using Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Coming up in defense of sex machines, it's Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose-to-nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24-hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription-strength medicine available over-the-counter. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keen in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,129 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports in a move that could dramatically shift the face of the Syrian civil war, Hezbollah has told Lebanon's Daily Star that it is their intention to shift to a purely defensive role in the country and that the town of Zabadani near the Lebanon border will be the last rebel-held target they'll help attack. That could be a big loss for the Assad government, which has relied heavily on the Shiite militias and Hezbollah in particular for major combat operations. Though Hezbollah gave no indication why they had changed their mind, they indicated that Zabadani was the last site needed to protect Lebanon from Islamist infiltration. This may not happen, however, as the Syrian military has agreed to an open-ended ceasefire with Al-Qaeda in Zabadani, and Hezbollah probably won't carry out their own offensive against the town during a ceasefire, despite its strategic importance. The transition may reflect domestic pressure on Hezbollah, as many Lebanese factions have accused them of provoking cross-border attacks by Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State by participating in the war in Syria and have called on Hezbollah to stop intervening abroad. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a former executive of a peanut company responsible for a deadly salmonella outbreak several years ago was sentenced Monday to serve nearly 30 years in federal prison, the harshest punishment ever handed down in a foodborne illness case. Stuart Parnell, the former owner of Peanut Corporation of America, PCA, was convicted last year of knowingly shipping tainted peanut butter and faking the results of lab tests intended to detect salmonella. Two others were prosecuted along with Parnell in the first ever criminal trial of food producers linked to a deadly outbreak. Parnell's brother, Michael, was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. Former quality control manager Mary Wilkerson received a five-year sentence. Before the 28-year sentence was read on Monday, relatives of the nine people who died during the outbreak in 2008 and 2009 spoke in court to express their losses. Randy Napier, whose 80-year-old mother died after eating peanut butter that originated in a PCA plant in Georgia, said it should be enough to send a message to the other manufacturers that this is not going to be tolerated anymore and they had better inspect their food. Parnell's defense attorney slammed Monday's punishment, saying it amounts to a life sentence for his 61-year-old client. In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports Republican Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin abruptly pulled out of the 2016 presidential race on Monday, doomed by a lightning-quick collapse from serious contender to a candidate struggling to raise money and his profile. Walker, reading a statement in the Wisconsin capital of Madison, decried the negative tone of the Republican campaign in remarks seemingly directed at New York billionaire Donald Trump. He called on some of his rivals for the Republican nomination to join him in exiting the race to give voters a chance to rally around a frontrunner that can win the November 2016 presidential election. Walker's fall was dramatic and swift. He electrified conservatives in Iowa in January by promoting his record in Wisconsin of having beaten back public unions and survived a recall election. When he officially announced his campaign in early July, he was among the leaders for the Republican nomination. But the 47-year-old governor quickly struggled on the campaign trail despite a strong conservative record and a warm personal story as a Harley motorcycle aficionado. 
In an initial sign of trouble, Walker last week canceled events in California and Michigan to concentrate on Iowa, the key early voting state that shares a border with Wisconsin. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Sources are confirming your dog died earlier today, and we're all really sorry you had to find out about it like this, buddy. Though it's a lousy thing to have to learn from an online web video, and even shittier to hear from a cold, hardened newsman's voice that you can't put a face to, your pet passed away in his sleep while you went out today, and we understand how shocked you must be right now. Sources added that there are many local shelters with animals in need of a good home, though we understand that no dog can ever truly replace the one you just lost. I lost a dog once, but my mom was the one who told me about it, and she was quite the comfort. In this week's op-ed pages, Pantene CEO Marcus Russo laments feeling like the only one who gives a shit about rich, lustrous hair. In other news, a study finds that newborn infants can tell if their parents are losers. A man who just assembled a desk is unsure how he has every screw left over. And Jeff Beck is lured into a dark alley with the old guitar pick on a string trick. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. It is Free Talk Live, and I'm told our phones are hopefully fixed, so feel free to be our next guinea pig. 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733, or take the safe road and call us on Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. You do have to send a contact request in first. We will approve it as soon as I notice it coming in. And you can talk to us about anything that happens to be on your mind. So far tonight, we've been on the sex robot topic again Because, well, the last time we talked about sex robots was when there was a study done, a poll of uh, people in the UK, males specifically, I believe, who would be willing to have sex with a sex robot. And it was maybe like 15% or something, like a relatively low number. I imagine that number is going to rise over time. And some people are very upset about the idea of sex robots. In fact, there's a website called Campaign Against Sex Robots.wordpress.com that seems to be legit. These people claim to have presented a uh, some sort of a study, or I guess not a study, but a, a paper to Ethicomp 2015, some sort of ethics convention. And there's also another uh, site which turned me on to this whole thing. I didn't realize there was already opposition to sex robots, so it came as a surprise to me. What turned me on to this was theconversation.com, where... Uh, let's see here. It is a lady who's writing this. Kate Devlin, the senior lecturer at the Department of Computing in Goldsmiths University of London, writes, In defense of sex machines, why trying to ban sex robots is wrong. Ban sex robots, scream the tech headlines, as if they're heralding uh, heralding the arrival of the latest artificial intelligence threat to humankind since autonomous killer robots. Yeah, I've got to say, when she mentions autonomous killer robots, you know, a great deal of the uh, innovation in this world comes centered around two things. Humans desire to fight, and humans desire to procreate. So, And what about the desire to not work as hard as they have been. I think that that one's good, but I don't think it drives the. I don't think it has the drive the other two do. The campaign, led by academics Kathleen Richardson and Eric Billing, argues the development of sex robots should be stopped because it reinforces or reproduces existing inequalities. Yes, society has enough problems with gender stereotypes, entrenched sexism, and sexual objectification, but actual opposition to developing sexual robots that aims for an outright ban? That seems short-sighted, even, pardon the pun, undesirable. Existing research into sex and robots generally centers on a superficial exploration of human attachment, popularized by films such as Her and Ex Machina, a male-dominated, male-gaze approach of machine as sex machine, often without consideration of gender parity. Groundbreaking work by David Levy built on the early research into teledildonics, that is, cybersex toys that are operable through the internet. Teledildonics. Yep. <laughs> Describes the increasing likelihood of a society that will welcome sex robots. For Levy, sex work is a model that can be mirrored in human-robot relations. Richardson doesn't relish this prospect, and to an extent, I agree with her misgivings. It's a narrative that should be challenged. I absolutely agree that to do so would require, as Richardson states in her paper, a discussion about the ethics of gender and sex robots. She says such a discussion is long overdue. 
in the gendering of robots and the sexualized personification of machines, digital sexual identity is too often presumed, but to date little considered. The relationship between humans and their artificial counterparts runs right back to the myths of ancient Greece, where sculptor Pygmalion's statue was brought to life with a kiss. It's the stuff of legend and of science fiction, part of our written history and part of our imagined future. The feminist thinker Donna Haraway's renowned A Cyborg Manifesto laid the modern groundwork for seriously considering a post-gendered world where distinction between natural and artificial life is blurred. Now, that's an interesting point, right? Because if we're adopting uh, robot technology into our bodies and eventually putting ourselves into a robot body completely, you know, completing the process and not just upgrading your eyeballs or your skin or whatever it is that you would be upgrading, but ultimately transitioning completely, as the transhumanists would point out, into a machine race, well, doesn't the idea of gender basically disappear at that point? It's all about, I, it's all about the chemicals. I imagine some folks are going to come up with some new genders. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could be right about that. You could have both parts. One on the front, one on behind, I guess. And the one that doesn't hurt, when, and, and you can get rid of the parts that uh, hurt when you kick them. Written in 1991, it's prescient in terms of its thinking about artificial sexuality. But just as we avoid importing existing gender and sexual biases into future technology, so we should also be cautious not to import established prudishness. Lack of openness about sex and sexual identities has been a source of great mental and social anguish for many people, even entire societies, for centuries. The politics behind this lack of candor is very damaging. The campaign sex to, uh, seeks rather to avoid the sexualization of robots, but at the cost of politicizing them and doing so in a narrow manner. If robots oughtn't to have artificial sexuality, why should they have a narrow and unreflective morality? It's one thing to have a conversation and conclude something about the development of technology. It's another to demand silence before anyone has a chance to speak. The scope for, and that's what these opponents of sex robots want. They don't even want them to be developed. They want to try to persuade. Now, some are saying outlaw, but they don't say that on their website. Uh, to pers- sure, they have no power. Right. To persuade. <laughs> when, once they get a, a modicum of power, I suspect you will find the, uh, the long knives come out. Yeah, you may be right about that. They want to persuade the roboticists, the people who are developing robots, to not uh, delve into this area. The scope. Yeah, well. I am uh, <laughs> that that isn't going to happen. The scope for sex robots goes far beyond Richardson's definition of them as machines in the form of women or children for use as sex objects, substitutes for human partners or prostitutes. Unquote. Yes, we impose our beliefs on these machines. We anthropomorphize and bring our prejudices and assumptions with us. Sex robots have, like much of the technology we use today, been designed by men for men. Think of the objects we use every day. And that's a problem with porn, by the way. I mean, there's there's women who complain about pornography because it's not made with women's desires in mind. There Generally. Is, right. There, there is women's porn, but I would say that it is a, uh, by and large, that's a correct statement. Well, and the, the women's porn exists as a response to the, the idea that most porn is made by and for men. Yeah, it's but, all those books with Fabio that they, that they read. You know, at the they hide in their, uh, their somebody's their somebody's buying those things, right? Oh yeah. Um, well, I would also say that there's uh, just because porn is made by men for men doesn't mean that it necessarily has the most distasteful aspects to it of uh, you know some of this porn. Yes, I agree. Some of this stuff is distasteful. It could possibly be. I don't know who gets off on it, frankly, but they do, and that's their business. I don't, you know, like I can't, I just can't speak to other people. I don't know who the perverts are. Are they all men? That's the claim here in the, the imagined well, claim amongst these articles. Well, is, are, are the men, are the men disproportionately represented in the area of pervertedness? I still don't know the answer uh, precisely, but I'd say the best thing to do is, is to. I would say they are definitely overrepresented in that area or misrepresented. Maybe. I think if women were, if culturally, if women were allowed to express themselves like we do, like men do, then you, you would find You'd out that, it. Ian, you're right. You would see it. However, they're not. And, and, and as far as the, the crazy porn, why do people even, why do, why do people get into that? And I'm thinking they've seen everything and they're only they looking, they're only, yeah, it's, it's an escalation. So if you are uh, part of the, if you're, you know, mem- a group of the women in the, in this culture, uh, and sex isn't a big thing on your your, your to do list, then there's no 
next level to escalate to. So it's so it's always going to be a, a lower tier of uh, of you know. It, it could be. Um, I you know all you can do is look at other animals in this case to see what women's sexuality would be like without the social constrictions that we currently have. I can say that. Um, you know, I've got pigs, and I had one instance where, um, you know, my my favorite pig, Kelly, came into heat, um, and she tore the, the the fence apart to get into the uh, boar, get into the wow. to the boar. Uh, she was the one. It wasn't take him. me. <laughs> she she wanted it badly, and the only time I'm scared of my sows is, is when, when they're is when they're heat. Randy because they've got no boar, and so they're like, oh, I God. mean, they literally will not bother my wife. But if I go I'm in there, at you. They, they'll like pull, try to. <laughs> pulling my boots and knock me over <laughs> and uh, to, to bite me on my calf, just a, you know, love nips or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, it's scary. This is a 450 pound animal who's uh, They step on you, you're well, in this trouble. Is, I've seen cats in heat, female cats in heat, and it's the same exact thing. I mean, they are you know, prepping themselves for, you know, for their, their friend to come yep. help them out. It's the meaning of they're, life. They're all, yeah, exactly. They're going to town. Our toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Your thoughts on sex bots are welcome. Also, Skype in. Skype username here is lrn.fm. You've got Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. That's the sound your brain makes when you realize you're buying something and forgot the coupon. Online or in a store, knowing that you're missing a deal is the worst. You need the app from Retail Me Not right now. Get thousands of coupons from 50,000 stores like Kohl's, Domino's, Best Buy, and more with crazy deals like 60% off, free shipping, and free gifts with purchase. You can get a text invite to download the Retail Me Not app 100% free right now for Apple or Android. Just text the code UPDATE to 42767. Then just show your phone at checkout to save. It literally couldn't be easier. It's 2015. Keep your coupon in your phone. Stop what you're doing and text UPDATE to 42767. Listeners will get a text with a link to download it 100% free. Never forget another coupon again. Text the code UPDATE to 42767 right now. That's UPDATE to 42767. Message and data rates may apply. For terms and privacy, visit RetailMeNot.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? 
At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here. Our toll-free number... 855-450-FREE is uh, the number for you to join the show and bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Maybe you don't want to talk about sex robots, which seem to be the inevitable future for mankind. Uh, Our toll-free number again, 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Conan. And Mark. Express Coin, the best way to pay for your sex robot. Oh, wait, you can't do that yet. But eventually, you'll probably be able to pay for your sex robots with Bitcoin uh, Litecoin, Dogecoin, not so sure about those two, but you can get them from ExpressCoin.com. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. If you've been thinking about Bitcoin, and you should be thinking about Bitcoin, uh, whether it's as an investment or as an alternative currency, Bitcoin's an amazing thing. It is uh, a decentralized currency, not issued by any bank or government, and it's been around since 2009 now, and it's really taken the world by storm. You really owe it to yourself to learn more about Bitcoin, and Bitcoin.com is a great place to go and do that. When you're ready to get some Bitcoin, ExpressCoin.com is the way to do it. In fact, you can get up to $40 worth of Bitcoin or one of those other cryptocurrencies with no transfer fee by using code FTL, like Free Talk Live, coupon code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, pretty much anybody in those two countries can use ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone via their app. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check through ExpressCoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive, and they're a licensed money services business. So go and get started right now at ExpressCoin.com, and don't forget coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live. As we continue here from theconversation.com in defense of sex machines, there are uh, there's a movement out there, the Campaign Against Sex Robots, that is advocating that those who are roboticist types who are developing the future of robot technology should stay away from developing sex robots because it's somehow going to be detrimental to uh, women and children. But uh, this lady is arguing that it's actually a good thing to have sex robots she goes on here, she says that, uh, t- pointing out that a lot of sex technology, sex robots, for instance, have been designed by men for men. Think of the objects we use every day. Smartphones, better suited to a man's larger hands and the pockets of men's clothing. Or, they have smaller smartphones? Not really. What? Not really. Most of the new smartphones, if you go and you look it's at- because people want bigger and bigger ones. Yeah, they, that does seem to be the case, right? I the, can tell you my, my wife's uh, friend just came in and showed off her new Samsung Mega. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've I've got to be able to play watch Netflix on this thing, Mark. Come on, really? Now. You actually watch Netflix on your smartphone? No, I don't. But I uh, well, actually, I did when I worked. Okay. Uh, you know, during lunch hours, you I would take go, a break. I would take a break, and I'd be able to actually watch stuff right there. And you know, stealing the Wi-Fi from the area. But uh, yeah, it's it, exactly the, they become more powerful, and you think they would get smaller and smaller, and you know, you'd have one in in grain in the side of your head. Mm-hmm. Uh, but We're no, not there it, yet. But now you can do more stuff on it. I can, you know, I'm. I'm on this thing all the time. I gotta say, I don't like the big smartphones. I think they're, you know, they're just too big, right? Like, there's I don't, more. There's more to break. Well, there's that, and it's, you know, probably gonna take more battery time to run a larger screen or whatever. But it's just too big for a pocket and for a phone, in my opinion. But man, you can't find a phone that's smaller than four inches. I mean, if it's anything from the major manufacturers at all, it's just not even a possibility. Yeah, I think you can still get some of those like smart talk little phones, a little pay by the card. Phones. They're out there, but you know, as far as the smart phones, you can't, you can't do anything on them. They don't have much get, computing power. Yeah, yeah, you can hardly check yeah. your email on them. Well, I, you know, what, I th- what we should do, since there aren't phones that are uh, uh, smaller than four inches, is blame men. Well, yeah. Because they're all about, you know, big things, right? And they they want they want to walk to the conversation with that big old phone in their pocket, and they're like, "Hey, is that a 
phone in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? Well, and and certainly, if women were demanding smarter, smaller phones, the market would respond. I mean, I imagine women buy as many phones as as men do. I don't imagine there's much gender discrepancy between who buys a smartphone. It seems to be relatively ubiquitous across uh, across the genders. But you know, I can understand having seen the size of women's pockets why that might be a frustration, right? They make these girly pockets that you can't put anything in. You can yeah, barely they don't, even they put don't, they don't spare use, change. They don't use purses anymore, so they're. I don't know about that, Conan. Is that true? Yeah, I think it's a declining fad. Purses I think, are on the way out. Mm-hmm. They had remember remember when they had the little the little backpack purses and they were getting smaller and smaller and they had a cute little backpacks and oh and they were sometimes they were like the fuzzy uh, little panda bears or something okay. with the back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen those. I'm and then, af- I'm, t- trust me, I've got lots of purses that I'm trying to sell, and no one's buying them. I'm hmm. afraid that women's fashion um, is uh, completely alternates between small handbags and large uh, purses, because the ladies carry around the small handbags they're like I gotta have more room for stuff, and mm-hmm. then they alternate up to uh, a big purse thing, and then they the like, big purses are all the rage, and it's like this big clunky thing I Too can't big. believe I carry it around. Yeah, and then they go down to the small handbag, and they're just <laughs> up and down. It's like men's ties. First they're thin, then they're wide, then they're thin. <laughs> no one wide. knows what they You know want. what we need? We need smaller knots, smaller knots. Now bigger knots, smaller knots, bigger knots. It's crazy. Uh, she says robotics also allows us to explore issues without the restrictions of being human. A machine is a blank slate that offers us the chance to reframe our ideas. The Internet has already opened up a world where people can explore their sexual identity and politics and build communities of those who share their views. Aided by technology, society is rethinking sex and gender dualism. Why should a sex robot be binary? And sex robots could go <laughs> it's beyond come with sex. attachments. What about the scope for therapy? Not just personal therapy, after all, companion and care robots are already in use, but also in th- uh, terms of therapy for those who break the law. Virtual reality has already been trialed in psychology and has been proposed as a way of treating sex offenders. Subject to ethical considerations, sex robots could be a valid way of progressing with this approach. To campaign against development is short-sighted. Instead of calling for an outright ban, why not use the topic as a base from which to explore new ideas of inclusivity, legality, and social change? Or better yet, if you're not going to actually kill uh, violent sex offenders... You're just going to keep him in jail forever. You can throw a sex robot in there and just lock, throw away the key, and there you go. Your problem solved. Nobody's going for it. Um, <laughs> you know, nobody wants anything good to happen to an inmate. I can assure you. It's time for new approaches to artificial sexuality, which includes a move away from the machine as sex machine hegemony and all its associated biases. Machines, she says, are what we make them, at least for now. If we've lost control of that, then we have a whole other set of problems. Fear of a branch of AI that is in its infancy is a reason to shape it, not ban it. Okay, so she has, she is starting to delve into that, uh, the takeover of the AI. But you know what? One thing they haven't brought up that I've, that bothers me is the the fall of the of the human race. This this is already a problem in many countries where the birth rate is so low. Uh, some countries they can't convince their populations to go out and have sex, and a lot like of these Japan. And, and look at their culture. I mean, I'm thinking more of, yeah, Japan, but also uh, South Korea. But look at their culture. I mean, they're really heavy in the big uh, video games and mm-hmm. online games. And uh, they do, the, of course, they had the cosplay and stuff. But, I mean, it the, I mean, it really seems like they're creating an alternative to actually going out, having sex, and having relationships with other people. Their culture really seems to be, uh, it seems to be growing around robots and sex robots will and, probably be and, huge there. and games and you know and escapism into this into other realities i like how if, she wraps it up here she says a campaign to stop killer robots is one thing but a campaign against sex robots make love not war um yeah it's very clever so i've got to say there are areas that i'd like to see scientists not do too much exploring uh there's, there's some things that bother me nuclear weapons comes to mind biological weapons mm-hmm. you know they uh, they recently there's some big big virus that was found in uh in, in russia that uh, apparently scientists are going to revitalize and these scares have come and gone throughout the years and so far we haven't been attacked by the next black plague 855 450 free. Okay, open your mouth and say ah. Uh.
When your child has a sore throat, you need to know when to get help. The doctor recommended Say Ah Sore Throat Exam is your solution. The scientifically designed oral retractor offers a clear view of the throat, relaxing the tongue and minimizing gag reflex. Compare with a medical grade chart, website, and app. Then you'll know just what to tell your doctor. A wellness plan in your hands in minutes. Go to SAYAHHnow.com. SayAhnow.com. The new mainstay for every family's first aid kit. Uh, no way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9 millimeter bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. When you're coping with bad news and the news media come calling, and they will, don't clam up. As notorious political figures find out the hard way, the cover-up can be worse than the crime. So get out in front of unfavorable news about your company, your group, or organization, or yourself. The sooner you confront a negative story, the sooner it will be over. Responding as quickly to negative stories as you do to positive ones enhances your credibility. Ability. Hiding embarrassing information or lying will do more damage than damage control. Never stonewall. Tell your side of the story, use specifics, and detail what corrective action has already been taken. Respond in kind. If the issue is emotional, don't sound like a cold, unemotional Mr. Spock. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can join us here on the radio at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. If you would like to save 20%, maybe even more, Who about wouldn't? 40%. That's the last discount I got through saveitpurse.com. If you'd like to save that kind of money on your Amazon purchases, because you know Amazon already has a huge selection. They've already got great prices and free Super Saver shipping and Prime and all that. I mean, Amazon's a great place to shop. There's no doubt about it. But if you could save 20% off of the Amazon prices, then why wouldn't you want to do that? Here's how you do it. You go to saveatpurse.com. 
Now, the catch is you have to use Bitcoin to make your purchase, and you do have to be a little patient. So when you place your order through save at purse.com, the higher the percentage you request, because you get to choose, you choose, you, there's a little slider. You slide that sucker as far as you want, all the way up to 50% off. We had one of our listeners claim he got 50% off. I've, yeah. I've never gotten it personally, but it's possible uh, through save at purse.com. So you slide that thing to wherever you feel comfortable, and then the higher up the percentage, the longer it might take to fulfill your order. In my case, the 40% order took a few days to come through. Actually, it it took a little longer because one person bought after like two days, but then it returned like they canceled their order or whatever. So it returned to the order book and then somebody else bought it after another couple days. So if you're patient, you can get huge discounts. If you're not as patient, set it at 20%. 20% is the average for the United States. You set it at 20%. Most people, the order's placed within a few hours. Easy. Go to saveitpurse.com. You get the same stuff you're going to buy anyway at 20% off or more or less. If for whatever reason you want instant, Purse Instant exists, you can knock 5% off and you don't have to wait at all. So go to save at purse.com. You do need Bitcoin, but you don't need to have the Bitcoin right now to go and get signed up for an account. You can just go over there and learn about how it works. It's brilliant and it works very well. I've done it more than two dozen times myself. Save at purse.com. As uh, we continue here, whether you want to talk about sex bots, that's still on the ta table for discussion. Uh, also coming up, Mark is going to tell us which state is the so-called strongest state. Uh, and I don't know if that's about lifting weights or what that is. Not about lifting weights. Uh, no. Steve is in Utah first. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Conan and Mark. Hello, Steve. Hey. I was listening to your uh, discussion about the sex robots, and the article sounds like it's... Uh, kind of an indictment against men about men just want sex. And my my thought is it's equally indicting against women. How so? Because, because uh, if the sex robot was just put out without all the uh, BS, you know, you wouldn't have to put up with all the BS that women carry around and load on to men and all that stuff. If, if it was just put out and you didn't have to put up with that, who wouldn't want that? I mean, that's what I'm thinking is probably equally true for women, though. I mean, like, you know, all the complaints that guys have about women are you know, mirrored by us, equal amount of complaints that women have about men. And if, you know, if you get the uh, the, the sex robot guy that uh, says, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear, and can reach all the tall tall uh, stuff on the top shelf and, and, and um, open the peanut butter jar, open up the jars, yeah. kill the bugs and uh, move the furniture around. At that point, what in the world does she need us for? At least they still right. have a uterus right we're the vestigial gender here i mean all it is well, is at this point with the uh, yeah, for the sex I, robots is keeping us entertained until death i agree with you in a way but but i think that that what it's saying is i mean i think the women would be wanting more utilitarian men would want just a robot that'll put out why not and then i don't have to put up with all that stuff women would want a, a, a robot that would be utilitarian well, the men would okay. want a utilitarian well, robot, too. I mean, women are going to want a robot that's going to give them a good rogering, too, man. I mean, That's, that's, that's absolutely not? true, but yeah. don't you want your sex robot to make spaghetti, too? I want my sex robot to wash the clothes and, uh, and to, you know... Vacuum the floor, and so do the women. And they, yeah, they, they need some. <laughs> they need someone to work on their car for them, and uh, you know, to lift that yeah. heavy washing machine and push it over to the wherever it's supposed to be at. Uh, we've had this exact yeah. conversation about uh, as far as the the argument against prostitution, which usually comes from women, and the, I think it's the exact same the, the exact same reasoning is why wouldn't they want a prostitute to compete with? And mm -hmm. this is exactly what this is. This is what I was saying earlier. These sex robots are competition, plain and simple, and it takes away the power that they've had for all of human existence. That's their power, and it's being taken away right now. Steve, anything else all you right. want to share? Go ahead. No, that was it. I just wanted to, to bring it up that uh, you can look at it indicting for both sides. So, you know, it sounds like it's just only one side. I see both angles on that one. Thanks for the call, Steve. I appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, I'm thinking dude robots for the girls you know, who are super strong and can do all these things and work on the car and whole night and not complain and not get drunk 
and pass out on the couch and not get you any that, mm. that evening. You don't have to worry about anything. You can and you can right. look like you can get a, a face attachment so you can look like Richard Gere or whoever the hot guy Tom is in Cruise. Bo- Tom they Cruise. are gonna make ugly ones, dude. Exactly. So I mean, <laughs> they're women, gonna make ones that look like you, me, and Ian. They're women gonna make should, the really we, good looking ones. Women should be just as hot for these sex robots as the dudes. I mean, I think it's you know it's only going to this is this this group. I, I I've lost interest in them. We need to talk about something else because these these people are crazy. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. Well, let's talk about who's the best, Mark, the best state, the strongest state, according to who? Well, according to Politico.com is where the article comes from. But there's always some ranking of states coming out here and there. Um, But uh, it looks like, well, you know, New Hampshire is the home of the Free State Project, so we we tend to be somewhat biased towards them. And I suspect that we you know, we mostly read these rankers where New Hampshire comes out on top. But you'd think that there'd be a lot of rankers where New Hampshire didn't come out on top. But the fact is, is New Hampshire seems to be in aggregate, in aggregate one of the best places in America yeah, to live. Year for. after year, article after article, it seems always that New Hampshire is at the top. And then Vermont is in there. And sometimes the safest state, the best place to raise a family, you know, it's all kinds of things. This is Cleanest here. air. Even though, even though they're always complaining how bad our air is here, they're crazy people. But Sometimes we're in the top three with, like, uh, Vermont and Maine. There's the local vor thing where people eat yeah. local foods. I think New Hampshire was number three on that one. Yeah, but there's best places to raise a family and that, you know, the yeah. Maine doesn't New Hampshire's number one on that N- one. Maine doesn't come in necessarily that good on there. And there's a variety of them out there, just a whole bunch of different ones. Um, on Tuesday, President Obama, if precedent holds, will declare that the state of the American Union is strong. Or is it? One way to judge is by the state of the states of the union. How strong are they? And dare we ask, which is the strongest? In 1931, H.L. Mencken, his uh, fellow editor at the American Mercury, Charles Angroff, um, wondered the same thing. In a three-part series, the magazine magazine called The Worst American State, the pair um, compiled dozens of rankings of population data, largely from the 1930 census, determined to anoint the best and worst of the 48 states and District of Columbia. This is 1930, Ian. Uh-huh. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. You don't have to talk down to me. I'm just making sure you know. Okay, thanks. It's 1930. Moving on. According to the um, – well, because somebody's bound to jump in. There's 50 states. Uh, in, in the end, Dar- Daryl's not here tonight. He's the one that corrects us on all our tomfoolery. I got to say, as far as 48 states go, the flag looked awesome back then. I remember seeing the Patton movie and him standing up in front of the 48 star flag. And that's just the way it should look. And frankly, I think Alaska and Hawaii would be happier if they weren't in it anyway. So but, right, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong. There are 50 on the flag. That's currently, correct. even though Puerto Rico is in there and they're probably yep. uh, the District there, of Columbia. Is there a couple either. other little it's, it's not a state. Caribbean yeah. islands? Yeah, there's Guam. not Caribbean, but uh, what, what South uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. Yeah, out in well, Virgin. Yeah, U.S. Virgin Islands, Caribbean, and then you're Guam. talking about stuff in uh, Pacific. I wonder mm-hmm. if Jefferson gets made, they'll uh, request to have the some more stars added. You to can the go ahead and Google uh, image search 51, 52, 53 star flags. People have already someone's um, figured this designers out. Designers oh, okay. have already gone and and take a look. So you know the the problem solved. Well, they can handle it. Um, anyway, going on, it says here, the best and the worst of the 48 states, according to various measures, wealth, culture, health, public safety. In the end, uh, Mencken and Arg- Ang- Angoff declared Connecticut and Massachusetts the most fortunate American states. And they deemed Mississippi without a serious rival to the lamentable preeminence of the worst American state. Uh, this the- was in the 30s, you said? Yes. Okay. The results will probably surprise no one, they wrote. Most Americans asked to name the most generally civilized American state would probably name Massachusetts at once. Nine out of ten would probably nominate Mississippi as the most backwards. So he, he believed that this was just a foregone conclusion, um, you know, at the time. Okay. So but now we're going to find out 2015? That's correct. All right. 855-450 free. 855-450-3733. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Pure, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-717-9859. The revolutionary O2 Pure design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no nasty tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love whenever and wherever they are. 
The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with O2 Pure. Again, free starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-717-9859. 1-800-717-9859. 1-800-717-9859. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at Slingbow.com. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I Armor.com. Come and take it. Free Talk Live. This is the first time I've heard your program. I'm, t- I'm hearing this person talk about what a wonderful thing it would be if we had legal drugs. Yes, I don't know Andy. where you're getting your information from. I think you've lost your mind. I'm telling you. I- oh, you don't want to hear. You no, don't want to no, hear I reality. Hear I want to hear everything you want to hear. You don't want to hear say. reality. Okay, Please, well then. Knock then me over with reality, like Sandy. A 12-year-old, you know? I'm telling you what about the war on drugs. <laughs> if you see people on drugs, you might change your mind. Man, look, no, wh- my wife. No. My my wife works in a drug treatment center, lady. Oh, good for her. There you go. Good for her. Sandy, okay. I've smoked copious amounts of marijuana. I, I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that a bit. That's probably what's wrong with your brain. I've been around plenty of people that have taken you drugs, Sandy. You got a fact Sandy. for me, and, uh, Sandy? One of them? Fact? I don't have statistics. Sandy, we're yeah. not asking people to smoke marijuana. We're just saying let's not make it illegal. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. You have joined us for Free Talk Live, and you can join us on the air by calling in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Which of the 50 states will be the strongest state, according to, I forgot who did the study. Politico. Politico Politico.com. Uh, We'll get into that here in a moment. Also, want to invite you to our website where you can get interactive with other Free Talk Live listeners. You create the content that you see there on the front page of the website. You do that by interacting with our Reddit-based system, which is free. You submit what you like, whatever it is you've seen on the Internet you want to share with us. Submit it there, and other listeners can vote up or down whether they like or dislike what you've put there. So go to freetalklive.com and get interactive. Also, you can join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. So, Mark, you're sharing from politico.com, and they're referencing an old study. or from an the old, 30s. Yeah, from the 30s, where they also did something very similar, where they took different factors. You mentioned health, culture, wealth, and there was a couple other things. 
uh, looking at the you know all those things for different states and figuring out which was the strongest state of the 30s and which was the weakest. They used the term was, fortunate and uh, lamentable. And now Mississippi showed up on the bottom of that chart. Lamentable. But was it Massachusetts that was Massachusetts the, the and top? Connecticut? They'd basically named as the most fortunate states. Got Massachusetts it. appeared to be their favorite of the two. Now Massachusetts isn't what it used to be, as far as I understand. But uh, let's hear the latest from 2015 or 2014. Honestly, the uh, the numbers haven't changed much, uh, really, over time. Yeah, Massachusetts um, is still up there, the, really, at least for the first and last. Even I'll, considering their debt and compared to all other New England states, well, it's very. Very strange that they are st- always on the top of the list. Look, Massachusetts isn't on top, but you'll hear people complain in New Hampshire about uh, mass, uh, Massachusetts unloading its mass holes northward. Mm-hmm. So if the right, mass- right, a hundred a hundred thousand in the last decade. If the good and productive and strong citizens of Massachusetts have moved forward, moved up northern, n- moved northward, then we've benefited. Then the the list is the same. Okay, because Mississippi is last and New Hampshire is first. New Hampshire number one. So with this in mind, Politico magazine rounded up uh, 14 different state rankings from reputable sources like the Census hmm. Bureau Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and uh, the FBI and on important factors like uh, uh, such as high school graduation rates. Did we need to, I wonder how much we paid for the Centers for Dis- Disease Control and Prevention to t- change, its, change its name from Centers for Disease Control and add that prevention thing on there. I wonder if they you know, some huge uh, study or uh, focus group went into that because whatever it is, I feel if, ripped if off. If they didn't. Yeah, exactly. And someone got a huge award for that, and it's sitting on their desk. I was responsible for changing the name. <laughs> They're going down award. in history. Yep. High school graduation rates, per in, uh, per capita income, life expectancy, and crime rate. Uh, then we averaged out each state's 14 rankings to come up with a master list, atop which sits none other than New Hampshire. The approach isn't scientific or comprehensive. Hey, neither was uh, Menken's. Um, not all states are created equal. California's economy is the world's eighth largest, for instance. So California, if it was a country, would be coming in behind France. Um, and Texas's population outranks that of most countries. We mm-hmm. also hold no grudges against the state of Mississippi, which came in last and um, not just overall, but in four of the individual lists. It certainly didn't attribute its woes to hordes of barbaric peasants, as Mencken did. It's nice, hordes of barbaric peasants. But given that uh, eight of the lowest-ranking states on our list overlap with the bottom ten in his, maybe less has changed in the past 83 years than you'd think. Maybe the uh, southern reconstruction of the north was was more successful than we think, because that's what really destroyed the uh, the, the southern states, in my opinion. Hmm. So overall ranking, um, Ian, how do you want these uh, listed off? I don't care. You just uh, want me to start you, at the top? Are you going to break it down as idea? the as the master list? Or are you going to actually break them down into like crime or, or hostility? Or, I can tell you the different lists, and I'll be happy to tell you who comes out on top of each of those. But uh, I think it's interesting that they get, tell you the governor of each state and whether they're a Democrat or Republican on the uh, the top list. So as though— the, I'm, the, I'm, I'm guessing the top five, and we're in the top five— all the governors are Democrats. Um, you actually got one uh, Republican in Utah, number four. Hmm. But Massachusetts does come in number five overall. Um, but uh, who was yeah. number two? Uh, Minnesota. Okay. Vermont, and this is overall based on sort of you know the rankings of them. Not this isn't a freedom index like freedom in the fifty states. This is just yeah. That's sort the of, Mercatus Center study, which I don't think they took into consideration here. Yeah, this is uh, this is comp- and, and, and and who is, where is New Hampshire on that the freedom list? It's ranged from one to four. I believe is currently ranked at four. Yeah, I've uh, they're supposed to be putting out a new one in December, and we'll see where New Hampshire comes out on that. I've heard they're going to do better. I don't no. know, just give us the top five or something. We don't need to know the whole ranking of the rankings of yeah. uh, the states. I I thought I basically did that, but okay. Oh, I'm sorry, um, I missed it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I heard Utah, Massachusetts, New Hampshire. Yeah, it was uh, Utah came in number four. Um, new Hampshire came in number one. Uh, Minnesota came in number two. Vermont number three. Massachusetts rounding out the top five. Wyoming and number six. Does it have the the least uh, the least five on that list? Yeah, you can have that. Sure. The, uh, the bottom of the pack. Five yeah. crappiest states according to this list are uh, Mississippi at fifty one. Yes, it's uh, uh, they include, lower than D C. They include D C in this okay. list. Um, it does. It's it ties with. Uh, I guess South Carolina or Alabama for hmm. either 45th or uh, 47th. I'm not entirely sure from the way it's written. Oh, I see. Um, Alabama, Tennessee, 
Arkansas and Louisiana and Mississippi. Mm. So all southern states. And that's mm. why I say Reconstruction, it was rough on the southern states. Now, what do you mean? Tend to be. What, what do you say that? Well, when the when the war of, uh, between the states was over, yeah. um, the war of northern aggression or the Civil War, whatever you want to call it, it wasn't over then, right? Like what happens? It's not like everybody thing just goes back to normal. You've got uh, the North is very concerned that there's going to be guerrilla fighting going on after this, and they is, and they owed money as well. Is Appomattox, uh, you know, going to be binding for people? Are they going to be happy about this? So Reconstruction had a variety of different policies that uh, were uh, damaging to the South and beneficial to the North, and so. You know, there you go. It also didn't help the poor in the South at all. Hmm. Well, thank you, Mark, for sharing uh, that list. Do you want to hear some else? of the criteria? So, I, like, they had yeah, different yeah. lists. Yeah, I want to yeah break down the the actual components to the master uh, list. Yeah, so there's the wealthiest per capita. Uh, D.C. came in on the top of that. Connecticut uh, came in behind them. There's the lowest unemployment. New Hampshire, by the way, does not rank top in any one of these lists. It How just do they comes end up number one? Because they're the best amongst them all in aggregate. Huh. Lowest unemployment, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, Utah, Hawaii. Meaning that all these other states ranked poorly on some other qualifier. Yeah, yeah. they did really good at something, and then they sucked at something else. Yeah, yeah. so it knocked them down the, the overall. Oh, I guess New Hampshire is on, um, number one on one of them. Sorry, I thought I rest, read through all the lists and didn't find it. Lowest poverty rate, New Hampshire, wow. number one. Uh, Maryland, Alaska, New Jersey, and Connecticut. That's interesting. But there, so there's lowest poverty rate versus wealthiest. Yeah, wealthiest people? is different than lo- versus the uh, the lowest unemployment and lowest uh, the p- poverty rate. Yes. Huh. So there's different ways of looking at wealth, and um, so you know, I guess it's nice not to have too many. Poor I people, know right? I've heard New Hampshire has a lot of millionaires in it. Well, it's not the wealthiest. I don't know where. Do you want to know where? I don't right? know where they're at. I know when I was delivering mail in Florida, I, there was some. I would deliver mail in the the richer country, mm-hmm. and these people, uh, good God, and I don't know where those people live here. They're not here in Keene. They they hide it real well up here. I think. Well, the um, New, New Hampshire come in, comes in seventh, if it makes you happy, okay. as far as wealthiest states. Uh, but uh, lowest poverty. I bet rates. you there's more wealth here, but you don't know it because it's it's likely uh, it's like a, like you know this is wealth that's on the books, right? Wealth that you can somehow categorize based on tax returns or whatever. Uh, I suspect there's more wealth in New Hampshire than that. Just I've just heard that. What I've do heard you think they're hiding? Just because of bitcoins, cars in their barn. I don't know. I mean, if you yeah. had money, you'd hide it, wouldn't you? How, yeah, I don't know how you're going to do it. Where in a Swiss bank account? They Whatever. can't do that anymore. There's Cayman some Islands. kind of bank account. Yeah, there's some kind of. Yeah, it's just wild speculation on the part of Ian's uh, <laughs> um, jingoistic ass here. So there what you go. What does that have to do with jingoism? Jingoism is uh, unreasonable nationalism, and I'm claiming that you— I'm just saying that's what I heard. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Do you believe it? I don't know. Okay, because I think you do. I that's ne- why I've never heard it. that, That's but that's very interesting. I didn't say I heard that it was the wealthiest state. I just said I heard there was a lot of millionaires. It's seventh. Here. That's That should make you happy. Seventh, um, excuse me, highest in home ownership— West Virginia tops them out. <laughs> Good going, West Virginia. Minnesota, Michigan, Delaware, and Iowa. New Hampshire does come in. Do you want to know where New Hampshire comes in on each of these, Ian? Would it make you yeah, happy? Where is New Hampshire on uh, on home ownership? Seventh. Oh, yeah, so they're, they're not that bad. Yeah. Okay. Highest percentage of high school graduates. Now, this is going to be very big in New England generally. Uh, education's just big here. Wyoming comes in number one. Minnesota, Montana, Alaska, New Hampshire, the only New England state that is represented in the top five. So I guess they're making me eat my words there around the United States. Good for them. Hey, more coming up here. You can join us, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's happened again. Another teenager prosecuted as an adult for having naked photos on his phone of himself. 855-450-FREE. That's our toll-free number, 855-450-3733. And welcome to our new affiliate in San Francisco, KG. They are on the air at uh, 88.1. It's <laughs> Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? 
someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. This is your Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is down $10 at $1,123 per ounce. Silver is 38 cents lower at $14.85 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $230 U.S. dollars. Roberts & Roberts is your trusted source for physical precious metals for nearly 40 years. Give us a call at 800-874-9760 or visit us online at rrbi.co. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,129 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports in a move that could dramatically shift the face of the Syrian civil war, Hezbollah has told Lebanon's Daily Star that it is their intention to shift to a purely defensive role in the country and that the town of Zabadani, near the Lebanon border, will be the last rebel-held target they'll help attack. That could be a big loss for the Assad government, which has relied heavily on the Shiite militias and Hezbollah in particular for major combat operations. Though Hezbollah gave no indication why they had changed their mind, they indicated that Zabadani was the last site needed to protect Lebanon from Islamist infiltration. This may not happen, however, as the Syrian military has agreed to an open-ended ceasefire with Al-Qaeda in Zabadani, and Hezbollah probably won't carry out their own offensive against the town during a ceasefire, despite its strategic importance. The transition may reflect domestic pressure on Hezbollah, as many Lebanese factions have accused them of provoking cross-border attacks by Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State by participating in the war in Syria and have called on Hezbollah to stop intervening abroad. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a former executive of a peanut company responsible for a deadly salmonella outbreak several years ago was sentenced Monday to serve nearly 30 years in federal prison, the harshest punishment ever handed down in a foodborne illness case. Stuart Parnell, the former owner of Peanut Corporation of America, PCA, was convicted last year of knowingly shipping tainted peanut butter and faking the results of lab tests intended to detect salmonella. Two others were prosecuted along with Parnell in the first ever criminal trial of food producers linked to a deadly outbreak. Parnell's brother, Michael, was sentenced to 20 years in federal prison. Former quality control manager Mary Wilkerson received a five-year sentence. Before the 28-year sentence was read on Monday, relatives of the nine people who died during the outbreak in 2008 and 2009 spoke in court to express their losses. Randy Napier, whose 80-year-old mother died after eating peanut butter that originated in a PCA plant in Georgia, said it should be enough to send a message to the other manufacturers that this is not going to be tolerated anymore and they had better inspect their food. Parnell's defense attorney slammed Monday's punishment, saying it amounts to a life sentence for his 61-year-old client. 
In Survivor Max by Davi Barker, 11-year-old Max must survive the zombie apocalypse alone in New Hampshire. Slow-moving and non-thinking, the lame brains swarm his home searching for living flesh. Max must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to plan his escape, but first he must prove that he's too smart to die. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook and Amazon or read Chapter 1 free at SurvivorMax.com. Reuters reports Republican Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin abruptly pulled out of the 2016 presidential race on Monday, doomed by a lightning-quick collapse from serious contender to a candidate struggling to raise money and his profile. Walker, reading a statement in the Wisconsin capital of Madison, decried the negative tone of the Republican campaign in remarks seemingly directed at New York billionaire Donald Trump. He called on some of his rivals for the Republican nomination to join him in exiting the race to give voters a chance to rally around a frontrunner that can win the November 2016 presidential election. Walker's fall was dramatic and swift. He electrified conservatives in Iowa in January by promoting his record in Wisconsin of having beaten back public unions and survived a recall election. When he officially announced his campaign in early July, he was among the leaders for the Republican nomination. But the 47-year-old governor quickly struggled on the campaign trail despite a strong conservative record and a warm personal story as a Harley motorcycle aficionado. In an initial sign of trouble, Walker last week canceled events in California and Michigan to concentrate on Iowa, the key early voting state that shares a border with Wisconsin. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. We have a breaking news blast on the tragic situation happening across the country in which more than 40,000 Americans have been trapped in a confessions animal hoarding marathon on Animal Planet for the last 13 hours. The Animal Hoarders Marathon began at 9 this morning as victims were preparing for a full day before hearing the fateful sound of the show's opening credits. Almost instantly, thousands were pinned to their couches by a story of a heavyset homosexual living with his partner, his toothless sister, and 31 chihuahuas. Rescue workers rushed to free as many victims as they could. The rope's secure? Rope's secure. We're gonna get you out of here. Just hold on a second, ma'am. Wait, I think the next one is about monkeys. Ready? Ready! Pull! No, no, wait, wait. Can I just see what happens with the feral cat? In other parts of the country, rescue workers enlisted volunteers who had already seen the episodes to spoil them for the victims. Oh yeah, this one. This is about the lady living with the dogs in the trailer. She doesn't even get evicted in the end. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here. Toll-free number for you, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com to enjoy the features that are waiting for you on the site with you in the studio this evening. You've got me, Ian. And Conan. And Mark. Coming up, it's happened yet again where another teenager has been prosecuted because he had pictures, naked pictures, this time of himself. That's not the first time that one's happened either. And this stuff just keeps coming around as the state attempts to teach those teens a lesson for following their hormones. Uh, we're going to jump into your calls and thoughts here first, though. John is listening in New York. Would it be illegal, by the way, just as a sort of throwback to our first topic, if you had a picture of your robot naked, uh, if the robot was freshly manufactured, would that also be a crime in the future? John, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. All right, Ian. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, just give a call. I uh, don't need to switch uh, topics on anything, but uh, just wanted to talk about a little bit like uh, the labor unions. Sure. And the, the, uh, the, you know, with, with the presidency. And it, it just reminds me, you know, when, like a union, uh, you can have libertarian, you know, small unions or, you know, get together. But I just feel that they're, so, they're just so political. And uh, it's like everything else, you know, it's like, you know, the churches, this, that. Um, just wanted to see, feel how you thought on that. You know, I don't want to say Just about much. union labor unions in general? I think he's well, talking about the well, ones that are actually using the power and force of government to get their salary exactly. increases. And that's the bad part. If they can go to their boss and say, hey, look, uh, we feel like we're being mistreated. We feel like we're not being paid enough. 
uh, we'd like an increase or otherwise we're going to all quit or do whatever. Uh, but that's not what they're doing. That's not what they're doing. They go to the, they go to the politicians and they get this passed as law, and that's where the problem is. Well, Conan, I'll, I'll admit, exactly right. But the other thing is, is we're we're not just pushing for, uh, you know, what what, what we want. They're, they're they're having to deal with the status, and they have they have to bow down to them, and it's not really what we want. But they're telling us, well, we have to deal with them. You know, so wait, just bit. to clarify, you're in a union, is that right? Well, listen, I was, uh, I'm was i an electrician by trade. Um, I had my own businesses, I, I, and I'm in a union now, and I, I like being with a whole bunch of other guys, just like I like being with uh, a, a church group, a libertarian group, or mm-hmm. other groups. But I don't like that the idea that, uh, you know, that there's so many people that they're, they're funding, you know, they, they have to... Uh, bow down to the, you know, the state. And, uh, you know, when I say that, they, 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 they try to brainwash you a little bit. When I say brainwash you, they, they like to tell you how, you know, how things are a little, you know. So just to clarify, you little. don't like that the union is bowing down to the state? Not bowing down. They are, uh, they're conforming with them. Are, are there any other of your buddies who are in the same union who feel the same way as you? Are you yeah, uh, are you yeah. just are you the black sheep of the group? No, no, I'm not the black. Listen, there's a lot of black sheep. We all know that. Um, no, um, but you know what? Everybody conforms because it's, it's easier. That's right, and mm. it's the uh, the path of least resistance. That's true. Yeah, this is kind of the nature of organizations in a statist paradigm. Um, so you've got the government, and as an organization gets bigger and more powerful, at at first it was labor unions getting beaten up by the uh, business owners, and the government was sort of looking the other way right. or, or helping. And then as the labor unions get more and more powerful, they're using the state to uh, beat up on other people. And this is the you know what uh, what's been referred to as the golden gun. Of of the go- of government, um, because yeah. it is a powerful weapon that can be employed against one's enemies. Yeah, I think that labor unions. Um, and, I think anybody a, has the pow- right. Anybody has the right to get together and do and, and create a group. But once they start using the power of the state against other people, that's the problem. Yeah, and a powerful voting base who are always going to vote for right. the well, guy that- who is promising the most uh, stuff. The most uh, Bernie Sanders, I'm talking about you, um, and it's right. it's horrible I'm, that I'm promising more stuff than Bernie Sanders. I'm yeah, but you haven't gotten the union endorsements yet. That's they must right. not have heard from you. Maybe you should call them up. <laughs> nah. Maybe you got some uh, campaign donations. Too much work. Fun. Hey, John, thanks for the call tonight, man. I definitely see where you're coming from, and I appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. Our toll free, you're welcome. Our toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Well, since he brought up unions, real quick before we get to the uh, the nudie picks story. Here's a, uh, a union-related story from mm, Hit, yeah. the Hit and Run blog on Reason. A Canadian cab driver, who many of whom are unionized. In fact, there is the Ottawa-Canada Cab Union that organized a protest at City Hall on Wednesday. Canadian cabbie told an Uber driver in a profanity-laced rant that went viral on YouTube last week, which, unfortunately, the video has since been taken down, Hopefully somebody copied it and reposted it. I'm sure it. they have. Uh, this guy tells a, a uh, an Uber passenger and driver, it, well, excuse me, he told the driver, if I see you again, you're dead meat. Go follow the law and get a real job, he shouted. Mm. Ottawa police say they're investigating the incident. Uh, apparently another Uber passenger yells, take a real, or uh, Uber uh, driver yells, excuse me, a Cabby yells to the Uber passenger, take a real taxi, you effing cheapskate. What's that you're driving, an automobile? Go get yourself a horse. Ottawa's this cab union. Same same argument. <laughs> Organized the protest at City Hall on Wednesday. Union President Amrit Singh told reporters that his members, quote, believe in peace, unquote, but that the city must crack down on the rapidly expanding e-hail service. His main concern isn't that Uber is hurting taxi drivers. He assured them with a straight face that it's the e-hail service that's hurting the public. Mm. Here are some more highlights of the week from the global Uber wars. I love how um, people, the public is being hurt by Uber. and That means that people can go get jobs and work part-time if that's what they want to do. That's hurting them, apparently. Uh, yeah, that, that's terrible for them. Uh, people can have lower prices for uh, transportation. 
That hurts them, too. All of the people who are actually uh, taking rides on Uber are actually masochists because every time they take a ride and get a better price, they're hurting themselves. Mm-hmm. I want to know, um, like, I'd like to see, can we can we get out the scales of justice here and, and weigh all the, show me the quantifiable harm that has been done to people because of Uber. Like, I don't know, maybe there is. Maybe there's somebody who didn't who got injured terribly in an automobile accident and because the Uber driver didn't have the proper uh, you know, livery uh, insurance. No, Uber requires insurance on all of their drivers. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but it's some, livery insurance. But someone is this is going to happen. Someone is going to drive someone else around and he's not going to have the the correct papers, the correct insurance and someone's going to get hurt and they are going to jump on this uh, like like white on rice. As as an excuse why this shouldn't be. Well, I guess. But I know that I've heard stories of taxi cab drivers, uh, you know, killing their fares. Um, mm. You know, so I mean, that's uh, you got to break a few eggs if you want to make an omelet. I just want to know the quantifiable numbers here. I mean, yes, there are chances you take in dealing with other human beings. On Tuesday, Uber argued before France's Constitutional Council that a law criminalizing Uber Pop, its lower-cost ride-sharing service, is both unconstitutional and selectively enforced. In June, France's two top Uber executives were indicted on criminal charges for their roles in the company and are now facing a two-year prison sentence. Also on Tuesday, the government turned down Uber's bid to operate legally in Delhi, India, although the company continued running without acknowledging the decision. Quote, Uber remains committed to serving the Delhi community, and we continue to work closely with the Delhi authorities to address any concerns they have. Spokesperson told TechCrunch, one of those concerns is that Uber is too cheap. The company would need to jack its fares (laughs) 43% to comply with a government-mandated price floor. So the government requires you charge a minimum amount Ugh, per mile. Yikes. Otherwise, you will hurt your customer. What was that? You 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 said selectively enforced with the France uh, issue. Uh, yeah, that's what the Uber argument was. Is that they? Uh, yeah, that 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 is unconstitutional and selective. Oh, I thought enforced. that was the government talking about Uber. Like they're only picking customers who they want to drive around, and they have to pick everyone. Uh, otherwise, they are selectively. Hmm. And it says Uber made the arguments. So. Okay, so may, all right, so I got that backwards. On Wednesday, 300 Danish cab drivers parked their vehicles in Christiansborg Slotspads, a public square in Copenhagen, to pre- uh, protest Uber's presence in the city. 300 yep. cab drivers. They earn more money for driving customers than allowed, said the chairman of the industry group. And one more highlight on the way here. You can also share your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. It's Free Talk Live. Money power and respect are all yours at credit success secrets revealed.com be seen as an industry leader you can do it the last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit did your nerves spike you didn't get the approval you seek but there's a better way we teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved get up to a hundred thousand dollars in instant business credit many people will get cash on the spot Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. 
I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who hey. 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 do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this costume. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, 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 now. wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Well, we definitely can't play that video on the air. In fact, it would be way too much effort to go through and try to blank out all the f-bombs in the video of the uber that was a really mad taxi driver yeah he was mad the uh, taxi driver threatening to uh, to harm the uber driver and uh threatening the passengers as well he, he said things about his mama it was amazing uh, did they say something about his mom i missed that part uh did that happen Look, I'm just talking about. Chris. Okay, yeah, I didn't think that. He's I the world's he worst straight man. I mean, I swear to God. <laughs> I thought so, I might have missed something. Did you I mean, tell me about your joke? I need to ask questions about your joke. Well, no. I mean, if he'd actually said something about his mama, I would have liked to have known that, but apparently that didn't happen. He called him a mother effer. Do you think that's enough? Uh, there was a lot of f words in the video, where uh, which is titled "Insane Taxi Driver Threatens to Kill Uber Driver and Passengers." The original version of this was taken offline, but somebody managed to grab it and put it on YouTube. So I've put the the link to it on our Facebook page. It's really short. Uh, it's only about a minute 20, and there are probably 30 F-bombs in there, so it really wouldn't be and by the And by the way, there are, there are similar videos. They're, they're coming from all over, France, from South America. Of the cabbies uh, these, on attack? Uber. Uber uh, cabbies are being attacked by these uh, by these unions. I mean, getting their windows broken in, getting, that. getting that was spit on, City. getting pulled out of their cars and and beat on. I mean, this is these people are not playing around. And this is what this is the problem with you know with unions. To with some with you, this is one of the problems with unions. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great when you can get together and uh, you know you know petition your boss to have changes done. But when people come out in droves like this and actually do harm to their fellow man in order to protect their jobs, I mean, they need to go home and reevaluate their lives and what they're all about. Yeah, if, you, if you have to beat someone up in order to uh, keep your job safe. This guy's mad because the customers want to pay less. That's right. <laughs> to go somewhere. Well, they, no, no, they, they want to hurt themselves because they're masochists. <laughs> well, that's what every business owner says. Um, I mean, really, uh, to some extent, this is what happens when you're you're in business. This is, it's frustrating that customer, customers want to pay less than what you can afford to do. Your old business model says, no, I am 
operating at the lowest level I can because that's what a business should be doing. If a business isn't operating the lowest profit level that it can, that They're means another business is going to come in and 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 you know do the same business model and then cut the margin and do th- and 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 beat them. Unless the government's protecting them from that happening. Well, in this case, Uber isn't doing the same business model. That's right. right. It's something different than what a taxi driver is doing. And the taxi drivers are like the taxi companies are like, oh my God, somebody's come in and changed our business model. Mm-hmm. Somebody moved the cheese. We're the candlestick makers, and somebody brought in a light bulb. I have a uh, yeah. These guys, these taxi drivers, they need to adapt the new business model, and they need to get rid of whatever is preventing them from from being able to charge the customers a reasonable rate. And the problem is. A lot of times it's the state regulations. It's the, it's the state monopoly the or the state regulations that prevent them from going out and purchasing their own vehicle or are, you know, working whatever type, whatever neighborhoods they choose or to work. Or charging lower than the minimum. There's certain like cities, France. like I think D.C. is one of them, where there's a certain minimum rate that uh, that you got to get charged. Yeah, stop complaining about it and fix the damn problem. In some cases, you don't have to... It's not that difficult to be a taxi driver in Sarasota, Florida, where we're from, and even here in Keene, New Hampshire. You can basically just be a taxi driver if you put stuff on the side of your car you're in. Um, And I don't know what the specific rules are, but that's relatively close. And at that point, many of these taxi drivers that are in those situations, they're just doubling up with Uber rides when they don't have time being, when they're not being called as a taxi driver. They're they're using their vehicle as, you know, it's already there. It's already got the sign on it already. And why not? Hey, I'm going to work off hours. Indeed. Exactly. And make that good money. go to Ron listening in Utah. You're on Free Talk Live. Tune to KZNU in St. George. Hey, Ron. Hi. Welcome. Man, you guys are hitting on so many hot button issues for me right now. I don't know where to start, but, uh, I uh, I uh, I worked on both sides of you know non-union and union, and uh, the thing that I like about the unions is they inspire solidarity, but it's not the same as you know these national unions that get so that are so easily corruptible, you mm-hmm. know. But uh, I feel the same uh, way. I, I I actually called about the sex robots and uh, you what know, about the, a sex bot union? That's <laughs> trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what happens when all the yeah. sex bots come together and they're yeah, tired I, I of being objectified? <laughs> I, I wouldn't want them organizing and conspiring against me, that's for mm-hmm. sure. But uh, I, you know, kitchen uh, will never I, get clean. I, I do know this much. I don't know that much about sex. I'm real, you know. I live in Utah. I'm naive, <laughs> you know, I'm forty something years old. Uh, you know, I, 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 the only, I, there's only one person, my spouse, that I've had actual sex with, oh. and. Uh, but uh, I do know that there's no substitute for the real thing, you know. Well, you say and, that now. <laughs> Wait till you try the sex spot. <laughs> I don't know what the specifics are, but uh, well, I think you might be right for the dudes, but maybe for the ladies. I've heard about these uh, these items well, that, that uh, yeah, are supposed wow, to make their, their eyes turn. Kind of worms there, but... <laughs> What were you going to say, Mark? The what? I've heard of these these items, these uh, these things that go buzz. They're supposed to be significantly better than a man. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I well, I hope uh, you know. I hope that that doesn't replace us at one time or another. But uh, as long as you can open a peanut I, butter I, jar, I, you're in, I, man. You know what? I saw a joke, a skit on this exact conversation where you, you, where the vibrator is supposed to take over, but then you have <laughs> to realize all the things that a vibrator cannot do to your girlfriend. That's true. <laughs> there, and, there, and it's and it, it is quite a long list of things. Well, that the, can't the vibrator be done. can't do uh, foreplay, right? Like, there's none of that. Uh, and the it can't sing, and uh, it can't hold you afterwards. Yeah, Ian. that's true. Vibrators are no good for snuggling. Yeah. Hey, Ron, thanks for sharing your thoughts. Anything else on your mind? I'm just gonna say, in my limited experiences, I've you know I I I've touched both. Uh, you know, as far as like artificial breasts and real breasts are concerned, and I know I prefer the real thing. Oh so. hell yeah. Thanks, Ron, for your and, call tonight. And the, and the look, it. too, man. There is nothing. Uh, ladies, if you're listening, you got the fakies. Don't do it. Don't oh, do it. If you're thinking man, about it, don't do are, it. They are, they just, oh, it, it, it makes my skin crawl. They are so horrible to look at, especially these, these because it's, 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 I think it's dying down a little bit, the trend. And, and I they're, hope and, so. they're, and they're also doing a better job. They're going underneath the muscle and stuff, but uh, as far as where the implants are actually mm. placed, but like these 80s models, the 80s porn girls, I mean, they are they're sickening to look at. I mean, it is really a horrible thing. I find it unattractive. I uh, I think that I, I like all kinds of stuff. Fine by me. If it makes you feel better about yourself to uh, to go ahead and get some augmentation, does go it, ahead though? and do it. Does it? Or is it know. only temporary? I've heard people say that it does. Yeah. 
I've, uh, you know, I mean, what do I know? It's none of my business. Uh, well, uh, I'm none not. None of these ladies have ever, if they if they feel like they want to give me some opinion on how I uh, can go ahead and make myself more attractive, feel free to. But the chances are I'm not going to listen to them either. Ladies, uh, if it makes you feel good, good, but you're not getting bed with me. Sorry. So if that's what you're, if, you that's what, if that's what you're doing it for, you're, you've, you've, you failed. You've lost the, uh, the battle with. With Conan here. I feel like you got to change inside of yourself if you want to feel good uh, about yourself, not the outside of yourself. Because once you change one part about your outside, if you're the kind of person who's disappointed in yourself and don't like yourself, you're just going to find something else about you you don't like. Even if you get the perfect boob job and you're so happy with your boobs, then it's going to be something on your little mole on your face, or it's going to be, you know, something else is going to just drive you. you know, have you heard that Barbie doll lady mm-hmm. and Ken doll? Yeah. These are two human beings who have gone through so many different different plastic surgeries. You got that Bieber dude too who was found dead just a while ago. Justin Bieber's dead? No, his his some dude who wanted to look like <laughs> Justin really? Bieber. Yeah. I'll, I'll bring up I the article. I hadn't heard about this guy. 855 450 free was it suicide? I think so. Was- 855 450 3733 plus cut. whatever you do, if you're under 18, don't take a picture of yourself naked. At the very least don't save it. It's Free Talk Live. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard-earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Hey, you can join us here on the radio waves. And uh, our phones are sounding better, by the way. Thank you to uh, the board operator and uh, engineer over at the Genesis Communications Network for ironing that one out. Phones have sounded great for the last couple hours of the show. So you can join us here on the phones if you are still in the old ways of technology. But you can also use Skype. And then you'll sound really great. Almost sometimes like you're sitting here in the studio with us. You know, I put Skype... I had it on my Android one time. I yeah. use it, I use it a few times. I'm wondering if that will instant sound upgrade. Better. Instant upgrade to your sound quality. So it so it doesn't just all right. So it's all right. Good. So, so here's why, Conan. I'll explain briefly. The well, old it's, phone it's using network. your Wi-Fi. Well, no, what's happened? Well, yes, it's doing that, but also the old phone. Ne- I mean, it's still the same phone, right? It's the same speaker. It's mm-hmm. the same microphone. Yep. But when you're talking into the phone over a phone connection, you're going through the old sort of legacy phone network, and your audio quality just gets chopped off, basically, to be legacy compatible, meaning that you'd be able to be heard on all the old phones in the world. Uh, but if you're using Skype, they don't have to go through the old phone network to transfer the audio. It just goes through Skype, and so there's no downgrade except if except if bandwidth drops out. So if bandwidth drops, then you might hear a little bit of a drop in quality on Skype. But even a dropped quality Skype call generally sounds better than the best sounding phone call. So uh, use Skype if you got it. Skype usernames lrn.fm. And Skype if, them if you got them. Yep. If you're thinking about incorporation, then don't go any further than LegalZoom.com. You can use code FTL and you'll save $10 off your legal order. Uh, everything from patents, wills, trademarks, and like I said, corporations uh, can protect you, by the way, against frivolous lawsuits that could wipe you out. So it's a smart idea to incorporate, and LegalZoom makes it fast and easy. Go to LegalZoom.com, use code FTL, save 10 bucks off your order of whatever. Let's go to Sean, listening in Montana. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian Conan and Mark. Sean? Hey, Conan. Today was uh, Topless Tuesday, and We've been watching for about <laughs> Disappointed. a couple months now. I'm just wondering why you weren't uh, going topless today. <laughs> well, you being in Montana, I think that you're uh, right around the same uh, latitude latitude as us. So, I mean, it, what, what's it what's it over there? I know it's about 55 right now outside. It's about, I don't know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really actually coming down. Last week, I think I mentioned it, that it was a little colder than usual. And it's been raining. It rained for a couple of days there, so it's... Uh, Summertime's over here in uh, in New Hampshire. We might have a few gasps of uh, warm right. weather during the daytime, but uh, once it's once that sun goes down, it starts to get a little chilly. Yeah, I've, so. I've, kept, it on, I've kept it off as long as possible, and, uh, in, you know... Topless Tuesdays is a summertime thing <laughs> in, uh, in New Hampshire, and that's about as, as far as it's going to go. But I'm sure for the right price, Conan could take some pictures for you and send them to you. <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this a lead into the, the story with the guy getting arrested, the little kid with the nudie pics on his phone? I don't know, Sean. What else did you want to share tonight? Go ahead. That was it. Oh, that was it. You really were just calling about Conan's shirt. All right, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Now, Conan is over the age of 18, so it is legal for him to take nude pictures of himself or uh, anyone else in the studio. But, And I guess it would be legal for you to take nude pictures and sell them as well. Well, now, what if my my nude pic... Can I give my nude pictures to someone else? And what if they are... not, Not that I'm... Uh, going in this direction, but what if they were? What if this kid ended up with my nude pictures? And and you, if you gave them to him, that might be con- like tr- contributing to the delinquency of a minor. But I don't know. What if he? I'd, what if he got my pictures? Yeah, if he got uh, your pictures, internet. that would be uh, just you know there'd be an investigation likely. 
Yeah, I would I would say, well, you know what? In, uh, contributing to the delinquency usually has to do with a minor getting caught for some sort of crime and then it being at the behest of an adult yeah. or that the adult assisted with. So just having your naked pictures wouldn't necessarily be a crime for I'm a, pretty for a sure minor. you're going to get some real problem by Someone, handing Someone's out, going to be talking to me on my front porch and yeah, naked asking me a lot of questions of about... Of yourself, especially homosexual naked pictures of yourself to uh, um, to, to teenagers. How do you have homosexual a, pictures versus heterosexual I, they, pictures? They're going to they're gonna decide. If they're just you. Oh, so someone gets... Yeah, someone gets to make that decision. So they, if I they am will. in some sort of homosexual pose, they'll be able to <laughs> determine that. <laughs> I don't know. I know it when I see it, pal. It's it's not just me in college with a with a sock on my on my dong and I'm standing there. It's this is you know somehow they'll be able to determine that it was, but but I there can was intention. You, I managed to come across the naked pictures of plenty of adults while I was uh, a, a teenager. Mostly they were in magazines. It didn't know that it was me. But um, so now yeah. how old was this kid? Ian fifteen. He was uh, sixteen at the time, and this was in North Carolina. The story from theguardian.com just published two days ago. The teenage boy in North Carolina has been prosecuted for having nude pictures of himself on his own mobile phone. The young man, who's now 17, but was 16 at the time of the photos being discovered, had to strike a plea deal to avoid potentially mm. going to jail and being registered as a sex offender. So he didn't get that. He, he at least got that wiped. The sex offender offense? He is not a registered sex offender at this time. Does it does it mention why they were on his phone? Was he, was he We'll get to it. All right. Experts condemn the case as ludicrous. The boy was, however, uh, punished by the courts and had to agree to be subject to warrantless searches by law enforcement for a year. So they get to search through his phone anytime they feel like it. In addition to other penalties, I presume that means like a fine or some community service, but they don't say. The young man was also named in the media and suffered a suspension. Really? As quarterback of his high school football team, man, oh well, man! While the case was being resolved, Cormega Copenning of Fayetteville, North Carolina, was prosecuted as an adult. How about that name? I've never seen that before. Cormega, uh, under federal child pornography felony laws for sexually exploiting. Going to give the cheerleaders a difficult time trying to include that name in a cheer. Ex <laughs> sexually exploiting a minor was what this was considered, even though the minor Is was himself. himself. Yeah. Justin Patchen, professor of criminal justice at the University of Wisconsin and the co-founder of research website said, of cyberbullying.org, said it's dysfunctional to be charged with possession of your own image. <laughs> Copening was charged with four counts of making and possessing images of himself and one count of possessing a naked image of his 16-year-old girlfriend. His girlfriend, Brianna Denson, took a plea deal herself after being prosecuted on similar charges for having naked, suggestive pictures of herself on her own cell phone as well. I mean, this is as insane as it can get, right? Can it get any more nuts than this? I mean, it was it was nuts when it was two teenagers taking pictures of themselves having sex, but now there's not even sex involved. Now it's just a naked picture. Now it's probably him standing in the mirror of the bathroom, yep. taking a picture of himself, flexing or something. And, uh, you know, now that's a crime too. Can't you see that these young kids are hurting themselves? <laughs> We've got to make laws. We've got to enforce these laws. Well, they're already there. We need to put them in a jail cell so they can't hurt themselves anymore. <laughs> Good God. A, I mean, it's funny because it's, it's so lu ludicrous. Yeah. This is just insane locking kids up. Uh, in this case, uh, they probably did lock him up briefly. I mean, but you remember, Mark, a decade ago when we were doing Free Talk Live, you know, down in Florida in the early days in New Hampshire, the news headlines were, you remember the, the teenage uh, young man from Georgia who had a BJ from his girlfriend and that was like sexual assault on him or on her rather. It was an, on her even though she voluntarily decided yes. to do it because she was under the age of 18 she couldn't voluntarily decide to do that and so he went to prison for that i mean that was the story a decade ago now you don't even have to have the bj now you just take a picture of yourself and send it to her or not even send it to her i don't know how he got discovered but jail time could have been in his future had he not taken that plea deal. exactly had he, had he not asked forgiveness from the almighty decision makers oh and you know they gave him a toss stern talking to oh son this is very dangerous activity you never know who you could be sending these pictures to we've done this for your own good now only our department of police has seen your penis right <laughs> they're all doing some investigating yep. 
The uh, pictures were discovered when the authorities were investigating a wider problem of sexual images allegedly being shared at school without the permission of the subjects involved. Copening turned out not to be involved in that case. So even though he wasn't involved in the wider investigation, he was still prosecuted for having his own image and his girlfriend's despite them not having been shared beyond the two. Copening and Denson's court cases were ostensibly about sexting, the sending of sexually explicit material by text messages, but the main charges related to them making and keeping their own images. I still want to know how they found his pictures. How did, did they just confiscate everybody's phones in the school? Well, and some, someone, was, someone was saying that he had pictures on his phone. He was showing them off. Well, that, that thing is, well, he wasn't doing that. 855-450 free. There was a larger investigation that somehow he got caught in. For P-150, P-150GA, P-150OK, P-150TN, C-250A, C-250E, C-250Q. Not available in all states. What's the scariest thing about going to the dentist? Opening your mouth or opening your wallet? Because just a simple cleaning can cost $100. And things like root canals can cost you hundreds more. If you don't have dental insurance to help, call Physicians Mutual Insurance Company. 1-800-809-5580. This isn't a discount plan or preventive-only coverage. This is real dental insurance that helps pay for checkups right away. So you can call today and get your teeth cleaned tomorrow. Plus, it helps cover the more expensive procedures you might need down the road. Fillings, crowns, bridges, even costly dentures. There's no deductible and no annual maximum. Your acceptance is guaranteed for one of these insurance policies, even if you're retired. There are no networks, so you can choose any dentist you'd like. Call in the next 10 minutes and we'll rush you a free information kit with all the details. 1-800-809-5580. That's 1-800-809-5580. 1-800-809-5580. I am a 47-year-old female and had a heart attack in 2005. This is Alice from New Jersey. I still get angina, even with four stents. I was taking nitro two or three times a week. The very first day after taking heart and body extract, the chest pain was gone. Now I don't wear a nitro patch. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. A revolution in body protection has arrived only at FortressSurvivalLLC.com. Introducing the revolutionary patented Level 3 Bulletproof Vest. 100% Kevlar, 100% American made. Concealable, fully adjustable, and the lowest price on the market. Adult size normally $289.99, now just $250. Kid size normally $239.99, now just $200. Get affordable protection with a Level 3A Bulletproof Vest from FortressSurvivalLLC.com. For thou art my rock in my fortress. Psalm 31.3. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. 
You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but there's enough time for you. If you dial in now, 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number, 855-450-3733. And in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Conan. And Mark. Conan is here, courtesy of his show, which is both a television and radio program. And Conan, you and I did a little TV production uh, together today. Oh, yeah. I was back in the saddle at Cheshire TV. Like old times. Behind the switchboard there and... uh, there was a couple butterflies for yeah. a second, oh, but yeah. then, but then after that show started, it was, it was, it feels good. It's, like getting it, back on a old bicycle or. Oh yeah, it was good years. stuff. And so we were producing uh, a, a a debate actually here in our, our very own Keene, New Hampshire. There's a three way mayoral race this year, and Daryl W. Perry, our Thursday night co-host, stepped up to organize the first debate that has happened here in little old Keene, New Hampshire, in something like eight years. The mm-hmm. first mayoral mm-hmm. debate, I guess, to be. Clear. Daryl has actually done a couple. And he of other actually debates. he actually got some flack earlier this week. People calling oh, yeah. in saying, "Oh my God, one of the free keeners is going to have this debate." <laughs> You can't say yes to this. This is this is madness. Oh yeah, the uh, the sort of the right. uh, the political establishment, the adults and adults that are uh, think enough of themselves to run for mayor couldn't possibly handle, uh, you know, organizing a, bad a moderator debate. or whatever. Yeah. By the way, most of the flack was coming from one of the current city councilors here right. in the area, who is just all he does is go around wiping up the messes that we're making. He's essentially we're hurting ourselves because we're masochists, and he is the one who is fixing it. So you're referring to the controversy over this debate, which had uh, been really one of the reasons why the debate was being talked about. Uh, because, oh, the free keen people are starting a debate. Well, it was actually all Daryl. He asked us to uh, to help, and it really was actually sponsored by the Keen Liberty Alliance. That's another thing entirely. But, yeah, it was free staters who were running the debate. Mm-hmm. And so this is a terrible thing. We can't have the free staters controlling the debate in Keene. Well, nobody else stepped up to create their own debate. None of the haters, none of the critics. No, they'll never do no, that. No, it's so did. much easier to go onto Facebook and type out three or four lines of vitriol than it is to actually actually do something and this is right. why these people continue to lose it's continue to lose ground is because they are nothing but chair warming uh, uh, crusaders complainers. well that's not true across the board one of the uh, stop free keeners is running for city council and she's got signs oh she's got signs around. mark she so bought some signs she's doing some stuff yeah you know it's more than i'm gonna do uh, i can tell you it, it takes more to uh do something and not expect to get a uh, an elected position out of it you know, like I go and uh, I well, do. Right, volunteer. Daryl's not running for an elected position. Right, he's, he's not just running for mayor. Giving to the well, community. Well, he's he's running for president. Well, yeah, there's that. But I meant in the municipal mm-hmm. yeah. elections. So we, so we get a lot of flack from uh, people in the area. Oh, you darn free keeners. And there's nothing you can do that's right in these people's never. minds. I mean, Daryl put together yeah. an, an, a real honorable debate. And anybody with a uh, an open mind that watches this debate is going to say, yeah, that was a great debate. It was fair. He took questions from the audience, even though there wasn't an audience in the studio. There was a phone number you could call in. He had it up for two weeks to, uh, to people who... Too keen people to leave their questions uh, to be to be asked. During it was this funny because like t- right before the until the day before the debate, he hadn't gotten any questions, and, and they was- all came in within 24 hours of uh, of the debate. So he actually did get input from people in the community who had questions to ask, and I think that you know if there's fence sitters out there who see this debate, they're going to say to themselves that this was a good thing and yeah, it that, was it was i'm not voting for any of these guys i'll probably i might vote for one of them but i don't really there's no, li- there's no liberty choice they, these are all statists yeah. but but it was a very pro- it was very professionally done yeah uh daryl looked smart the the, the video the cheshire tv's got good video now so yeah, i mean it looks, looks good so it's all on youtube right now. i think is it at it's, freaking.com yet? he's gonna put it up i think tonight the video is up already on his fpp.cc YouTube YouTube channel, and he's going to post it to freekeen.com. So you guys can see. You know, this is the kind of thing that one guy, uh, one person really can make a difference. Now, obviously, we helped, but without Daryl really 
pushing it, it forward. It never would have happened. It never would have happened. He set up the debate. He set up the Facebook event. He promoted it. He even got up at 6.15 in the morning to do a local radio interview to talk about it because there was so much controversy about yeah. who was putting on the debate. I told him, look, you know, they're talking about you on the radio. I got up one morning, and, the, and they were talking about him in the newscast. Like, Free Keen putting on a debate. And da, da, da. Well, okay, call the guy and tell him they you're willing to— They took our jobs. Yeah. So yeah. I told him, hey, call the— uh, you know, or uh, send an email to the local morning show host and tell him you're willing to, you know, if he wants to have you come talk about it. Okay, he did. 6.15 in the morning. I wonder how many of the the, the complainers actually took time to listen. To watch the debate? Yeah. Oh, I doubt that many of them, but who knows? Well, I got an opinion about something that I really should just shut up about. So that was a roundabout way of introducing Black Sheep Rising, which is your (laughs) television show, Conan, that you produce in your own TV studio. Uh, at your house. That's right. We'll be having another episode next Saturday. I'm doing the show notes right now and uh, probably going to be Daryl and Sean again this weekend. Uh, yeah. Uh, monthly program. We talk about uh, current events, local events. We'll probably be talking about this debate. Uh, we might talk about the Keenvention coming up. Uh, that's right. And uh, You're throwing a party during Keenvention as well. That's at right. At the studio. It's going to be a great for Black bonfire. Sheep Rising. If it's anything like last year's bonfire, uh, it, this is something that you don't want to miss. Yeah, people it was epic were, last year. Yeah, people were finding out about this the next day, and they were heartbroken. They were bummed, for sure. Especially when the pictures came out. I did like 200, 300 pictures like I usually do, and it's just, it's a, it just, it's just a really fun event, and it's a great way to meet people. So I'm go, I'm actually, Black Sheep Rising, I'm done going moving into Keenvention, which is uh, coming up uh, next month, and uh, it's something you don't want to miss. Go to blacksheeprising.org. Don't miss that either. You can subscribe via podcast. You can get the audio version if you're driving to work. You don't right, have to I watch just, the show. I just fixed the iTunes. I had an RSS stream problem. It's done. Everything's synced, so you all the latest episodes are where they're supposed to be on cool. iTunes. Keenvention is coming up in uh, about five weeks. It's, um, it's starting October 30th, going through November 1st. We're about to announce... You know, I might as well just announce it here on the radio. The the, the new keynote speaker, Chris Cantwell, pulled out of mm-hmm. uh, Keenvention, yeah, sadly. Uh, but uh, I'm actually really excited because it gives me the chance to put in Christopher David as our new keynote speaker. Now, for for listeners of the show, uh, and most people aren't going to know that name. Christopher David is a, is a new name to me. Um, I just learned about him last week when he had pledged to commit civil disobedience for Uber. So he is in uh, lives in the Portsmouth area of New Hampshire, and he is an Uber driver part time. He does something else for for a living, I think, on a more technical field like mm-hmm. IT kind of work. But he's doing part time Uber driving, and he says that uh, he is committing civil disobedience regularly now because it's illegal to drive for Uber out in Portsmouth. They have essentially regulated Uber out of the city, or at least the regulators have tried that. But Uber is still available in Portsmouth, and he's still given rides. So every ride, every fare he picks up is a potential cop and a potential arrest or uh, or a ticketing. So I think that's it's great to see civil disobedience come back to New Hampshire. It's nice to see it spreading outside of Keene to hit all the way over on the seacoast, and I think he's going to be a great uh, speaker. He's actually going to talk about uh, peer-to-peer and how that's going to help uh, destroy the state. So I'm really excited yeah, about that. Yeah, folks need to stand up. I mean, it's not you're not going to get this asking permission from your legislators and from the, the people who are stepping on your throats uh, you've got to sometimes stand up and say, hey, look, no, I'm going to drive my taxi around. My, my, I'm going to drive my personal vehicle around. I'm going to pick people up. I'm that's what it. it takes. It takes the courage to stand up for your beliefs, and that's why that guy deserves a keynote speech, I think. So he's going to be doing that. We'll announce that officially over at keenvention.info. It's 60 bucks. They get you in for the entire weekend. You can meet great activists like Conan and many of the other names that you hear here on Free Talk Live. Don't miss it. Uh, October 30th through November 1st, 60 bucks, or you can pay in Bitcoin at keenvention.info. John is in Utah listening to KZNU in St. George. Hello, John. Hey, guys. How are we doing? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Hey, thank you. Um, I've got upside and downside of the sex robot debate and everything. <laughs> All right. <laughs> upside, okay, there's an upside and downside. I didn't add, I, I had a joke for the, the kid about the BG. I thought that was a sandwich, some type of sandwich, the one that went to jail, but you guys don't do rim shots, so I won't go there. Okay, <laughs> Down, downside is it, it's the dehumanizing factor. Okay, I live out in Utah, tons of polygamists out here and everything like that. And the running joke out here, guys, is why on earth would you want another wife? You oh, can't yeah. even deal with the one you got. Okay, so all of a sudden you can spend twenty five, thirty thousand for a lifelike actual doll, woman, whatever robot that doesn't complain, I don't have to buy at dinner, and I don't have to cuddle afterwards. 
okay? Or I can come home and I can sleep with a German that night, or I can sleep with somebody from Cuba, or I can sleep from China. You know what I mean? Uh, the programming possibilities mm. are out the wall, are out the uh, out the window on this. Now, let's take it to a safety standpoint. I know the Pope is coming here, and that brings up pedophile priests. Okay, they get out of prison. You know they're still thinking about it because they've proven scientifically that you cannot reform these guys that are level three. Why can't they have a robot doll to take out their fantasies on? And, yeah, this is what I was saying. Work. This is what I was saying earlier that you yep. this, the this is, might this might be an outlet escape for those types of people that they, we can't get rid of them any other way. So I don't know. Maybe this right. is, is the it solution. Cathartic? Or is it, I mean, uh, or does it just grow the problem? Well, encourage them, right? And yeah. I don't know the answer, no, right? Like so, the, it doesn't grow. It doesn't grow the problem. It's like it, like it curbs the problem. They're going to act out one that, way or another. That's a claim. I, I, I don't rather, know what the science is behind it, but I mean, yeah, you're right. Thanks, it, John. It, it I wish we had more things, time. For if there's a little you. kid but robot that would run around. FreeTalkLive.com. Ah, See you tomorrow. Ah. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Halloween costume dance party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. SWCPoker.eu is Bitcoin Poker 2.0, where players can buy chips, play, and cash out anonymously with Bitcoin. No banking, just Bitcoin. Texas Hold'em, Omaha Hold'em, Draw, and many new games, including Chinese Poker. SWC Poker gladly accepts players worldwide, and over 2 million hands of Bitcoin Poker have been dealt at SWCPoker.eu. Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust. SWCPoker.eu. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.95 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,129 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $232. Antiwar.com reports in a move that could dramatically shift the face of the Syrian civil war, Hezbollah has told Lebanon's Daily Star that it is their intention to shift to a purely defensive role in the country and that the town of Zabadani, near the Lebanon border, will be the last rebel-held target they'll help attack. That could be a big loss for the Assad government, which has relied heavily on the Shiite militias and Hezbollah in particular for major combat operations. Though Hezbollah gave no indication why they had changed their mind, they indicated that Zabadani was the last site needed to protect Lebanon from Islamist